CBS Television Sports presents the National Hockey League. Today, the Boston Bruins meet the Chicago Blackhawks. Brought to you by Oppenheimer Management Corporation, distributors of the Oppenheimer Fund, and by Autolite Power Tip Spark Force, that last and last. And by Palm Olive Rapid Shave Menthol Mint, Juicy Lime, and Morning Fresh Regular. And by Sears Tire and Auto Center. You find die-hard batteries on a complete line of quality tires. Bye. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan Kelly with Jim Gordon. Welcome to another CBS Game of the Week. The Boston Bruins, the league leaders in the East Division against the Chicago Blackhawks, the league leaders in the West Division. What else need you say, Jim? Only one time this year Chicago lost a game at home. Lost, as a matter of fact, quite bad to the Boston Bruins. The final score was 5-1. And you can bet that Billy Ray and the Chicago Blackhawks have been thinking an awful lot about that one. The Bruins have an edge on the Hawks over the season play. In four previous meetings, the Bruins have won three. The Hawks have won only one. Meanwhile, there's one guy that the Blackhawks worry about. You talked to Billy Ray before today's game, and that's a guy called Bobby Orr. Billy says if there's one man in this team that you must contain, it's going to have to be Bobby Orr. And this is, of course, a lot easier said than done, Danny, as you well know. Meanwhile, Tom Johnson has worries, too, and the Bruins, because the Blackhawks have a guy in their club by the name of Bobby Hull. Johnson usually sends Eddie Westfall out to check hockey's golden jet Bobby Hull. But they have other stars, and so do the Bruins. These are two great hockey clubs. One small note here for Bobby Hall, it might be a little bit more difficult. Chico Mackey is out. He's got a hip injury. Uh, Martin had the flu, his second line mate. He will play, but we don't know how effective he's going to be. But Chico Mackey definitely will sit out. It should be a great one. The first place teams, the Bruins and the Hawks, east and west, respectively. We'll be ready for the opening faceoff in just a moment. I hate to lose. Dad, why'd you tape this commercial? Get rid of my dandruff problem. Then my wife bought Endon Dandruff Shampoo. She liked it just for the shampoo. But I'll tell you, using Endon regularly is the best defense against dandruff I've ever found. Now, I want all the hair I can get. Endon, with the ingredient most medical authorities recommend. Endon Is this a news room? <laughs> Greetings again from Chicago Stadium, Dan Kelly with Jim Gordon at another CBS Game of the Week hockey telecast. And this one has all the makings of a great one. The Chicago Blackhawks are in first place in the National Hockey League's West Division with a comfortable 12-point margin on the Minnesota North Stars. The Boston Bruins in the East Division have a comfortable 9-point lead on the New York Rangers. And, of course, some people are talking about the fact that this could be a preview of the 1972 Stanley Cup Final. There's a lot of hockey to go yet before that's decided. There's Eddie Johnston, the Boston Bruin goaltender. Tony Esposito will be in goal for the Chicago Blackhawks. The referee today is Bruce Hood. The linesmen are Claude Bechard and Neil Armstrong. And, of course, we have the brothers Esposito facing each other. Bill Esposito, the high-scoring Bruin center who reached the 100-point plateau last night, and he's shooting against his younger brother, the Hawk goaltender, the Michigan Tech graduate, Tony Esposito. Bill Esposito, by the way, today is celebrating his 30th birthday, and last night he also reached the 100-point plateau. Now, let's enjoy our national anthem here at Chicago Stadium. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled 
Chicago Stadium. Let's go, Ed Bruce. Johnson starting in goal for the Bruins, and he has a 2.36. Goals against average. Down at the other end, Tony Esposito with a tremendous 1.81 goals against Mark. Esposito and his goaltender back up today, Gary Smith, along with Jerry Dejarda, who is the third Blackhawk Black goaltender, lead in the best of trophy race. And the, the Bruins are right behind them in second place. Referee Bruce Hood, ready to drop the puck, a pair of number sevens, hit Martin against Esposito. The puck goes to Foley at the, or to Korab at the hawk line. He tried to carry it into the Bruins zone, it was broken up. Cleared down into the Chicago zone, and Eric Nestorinko, number 15, the veteran hawk is back to get it to Jarrett. Jarrett out to Bobby Hull, now to Pitt Martin at center, and Rick Smith, number 10, back to get it for the Bruins to Bailey. He shot. This program is really interrupted by a special news bulletin. Number 22 for the Chicago Blackhawks is Jerry Korab. Big, rangy defenseman. He is paired off with Doug Jarrett on the Chicago defense. That's usually the spot occupied by Keith Magnuson. Magnuson is in uniform today, but has his cast in an arm, or his arm in a cast, pardon me, and has not seen any action for the past four games. He has been dressed but has not been used. Now here's Pitt Martin. The core ab number 22 over to Bobby Hull. Hull flipping it out to Jarrett. Jarrett number four to center ice. Trying to get it by Orr. It's broken up by Rick Smith. Puck in the corner. Smith passing it out to number 14, Ace Bailey. Long shot wide of the hawk goal. Esposito clears it off onto the right wing boards. Martin couldn't get it out. Now here's Korab shooting at the center as Bailey bumped it. Martin. Here's Bobby Orr, number four. Into the hot zone. Jarrett bumped him on the boards, and Bobby Hull, number nine, has it for the Blackhawks. Trying to shoot it out, held in by Bailey, a deflection. Good stop by Esposito. Now Cashman into Esposito, back to Cashman and Pitt Martin. Tips it into the corner. Martin for the Blackhawks. Out on right wing to Nestorico. It's too far ahead. Rick Smith back to get it number 10. Smith tied up by Nestorico. Bobby Hull centered it, but Orr intercepts. Here's Orr. On left wing to Bailey. Now to Esposito. He flips it into the Blackhawks zone. Tony Esposito out of the net to clear it. It goes to Makita number 21. Stan Makita, one of the smartest hockey players in the game. Passes to Stapleton. Now to Bill White. White into the Bruins zone. Centered it. Now there's Coral a shot that's high off the glass. Makita. Tied up by Westfall. Puck still in the Blackhawk zone. Stapleton into Makita. To Dennis Hull and his shot was wide of the net. Don Mark caught. Now to Esposito, number seven for the Bruins. Bill Esposito's long shot wide of the net. Here's Westfall centering it. Bill White knocks it down. Out to Dennis Hall, number 10. Long right wing pass broken up by Sanderson. Both clubs starting off very cautiously. Here's Dennis Hall with a booming slap shot that Eddie Johnson had trouble with. Now Dallas Smith falls with the puck underneath him and will have a face off in the ruin zone to the right of Eddie Johnson. Have a chance to watch the match matchups of two of the finest lines in the league. Bobby Hull's line opposed by Phil Esposito, of course. Wayne Cashman drew the particular assignment in the opening turn, at least, of trying to contain Hull. A tough job. Makita gets the draw, but Ted Green, number six, has it for Boston. Passing it out, Marcotte missed it. Here's Bill White with a shot wide of the net. Now Dennis Hull moving in, tied up by Westfall. And they also Puck goes Kenny loose on the wing. Marcotte couldn't clear it, and Ted Green is back in the corner for the Bruins. Shoots at the center. Pat Stapleton, number 12, over to Bill White. Out at center ice to Coral, ahead to Makita. He tips it into the Bruins zone. Here's Dennis Hall, number 10, in there to get it. Tied up by Westfall, and Westfall takes it away from Dennis Hall to Ted Green. Green is tipped by Makita. 
Tito lost it, and Green feeds it over to Dallas Smith. Now to West Ball at center. He's checked. Checking is extremely close. Dallas Smith trying to clear it in. Stapleton knocks it down at its offside anyway at the Chicago Blue Line. The action has stopped here in Chicago Stadium. Let's pause for a moment. Three minutes and 12 seconds has gone by in the first period. It's Boston nothing, Chicago nothing. Long shot. Esposito stops it. Jarrett gets it for the Hawks. Passes it up to number six. Luan got it. Here's Angotti moving in, trying to center it to Bordelow. He couldn't get a shot away. And McKenzie has it for the Bruins, shooting at the center. Number 22, Korab knocks it down there. He clears the puck into the Bruins zone. Back to get it is Don Ore, number 26, who's back in the Bruin lineup after being out for several weeks with a broken ankle. Now it's Stanfield, number 17. Stanfield flips it into the hot zone. Esposito at the side of the net, leaves it for Jarrett, number four. McKenzie steals it, centered it back. Ori couldn't hold it in. It goes all the way down the ice. And the Bruins have to go back and get it. Don Ori out on the Boston defense with Orr. Ori, number 26. Watched by Angotti. Now the pass goes to Stanfield, number 17, to Orr. Orr inside his own blue line, number four. Passes it to Ori. Ori ahead to McKenzie. Bordelow knocked that down, and Angotti has it. He's checked by Don Ori. Puck is taken by Korab at the Chicago blue line. Stick handles to center. Ori breaks it up, clears it back into the Chicago zone, and it's offside at the Chicago blue line. We talked about injuries, and Chico Mackey out of the Chicago lineup. The Bruins playing today's game without Ken Hodge, who's out with a broken ankle, and also without the services of Mike Walton. Lou Angotti with Jim Pappen and Chris Bordalo for the Blackhawks against Stanfield, McKenzie, and Busick. Korab on the Chicago defense with Jarrett. Gives it to Jarrett. Out to Bordalo. He headmans the puck to Korab. Number 22 moving in his shot. Flex off Ori and is up over the glass. And Korab and Don Ori had their sticks up as they collided just inside the Boston Blue Line. One thing that might be a bit surprising, Dan, frequently Chicago against a top-rated opponent like New York or Boston or one of the leading contenders, Montreal, will play a Stanley Cup kind of a game. But this has been fairly wide open so far. We haven't seen the type of tight checking that we've been expecting. Bill Esposito with Cashman and Bailey against Pitt Martin, Bobby Hull, and veteran Eric Mesterenko. Here's Dallas Smith to Rick Smith. Rick Smith, number 10, pumped by Bobby Hull. Now over to Dallas Smith. They're not related, by the way. Back to Rick Smith. He's in behind the Bruin goal, and Phil Esposito comes back to help out. It's passed out to Dallas Smith. Now to Bailey. Bailey gives the puck to Esposito. Come on, Into the hot zone to Cashman. Come on, Back Phil. to Esposito. Phil Esposito in the corner, checked by Bill White. Pitt Martin has it. He lost it. Here's Bailey centering it to Cashman. Come on, Ace. The shot deflected, and it goes wide of the hot goal. And Tony Esposito holds it against the side of his... And will have a face-off in the Chicago zone. Tony Esposito, the goaltender, with that great 1.181 goals against average, facing Phil Esposito, the 100-point scorer again this year. And that's quite a matchup and quite a meeting. Phil had the worst of it. He also had White on his back at the same time, Dan. He didn't have much chance to make a move. Phil Esposito gets the draw. Dallas Smith couldn't hold it in. Dallas Smith back near his own blue line. Now Rick Smith, number 10, has it, giving it to Bailey, number 14. Bailey for the Bruins, passing it to Cashman. He shoots it into the Chicago zone. Phil Esposito in there after it against White, and they hold it against the boards for another faceoff in the hot zone. We've played five minutes and 35 seconds of the first period. There's Phil Esposito, and it's Chicago nothing, Boston nothing. Scored his 100th point last night. There's no reason in the world why Phil Esposito won't be threatening his own record. He's having a good year. Three consecutive years, he's reached the 100-point mark. Their shot is blocked, and here's Bobby Hull, number nine. The golden jet to Pitt Martin, back to Bobby Hull. Hull along the boards to Martin. Martin trying to center it, gets it to Stapleton. Now Nestorinko centers to Bobby Hull. Back to Stapleton. Stapleton, a slap shot. Eddie Johnson to save. Nestor Rico a shot. And Johnson stopped that. Now Pitt Martin a shot. And Eddie Johnson stopped him from the edge of the road. Good stop.
Blackhawks there. Out of four inning. As the Blackhawks break early and have three good chances, but Johnston stopped them all. And it was very, very tough in there for Johnson. A good pad save there, a dead on. And finally it goes out to Pitt Martin who tries one more and Johnson decides to go for cover. Out of four, Eddie. Three quick shots on goal and Eddie Johnston looked very alert in stopping them all. Makita with Coro and Dennis Hull. Now for the Blackhawks uh, against lucky. the Sanders. And there's Korab with a shot from the point that's wide. West Hall and Dennis Hull fight for it. Now Sanders. Out of center ice to Don Watt. And Korab intercepts the pass. And he goes off his stick up over the glass. This Chicago crowd really noisy today for this big one as the Hawks, the league leaders in the West, meet the league leaders in the East, the Bruins been sold out for three months. Incidentally, something you wouldn't have predicted before this year began, Boston and Chicago are both the leaders going for the dozen of trophies. Boston, of course, a tremendous offensive team. This year, the Big D comes well for them. They've tightened up defensively a great deal this season. Here's Orr. Number four, shooting it into the hot zone. Tony Esposito behind the net to Jarrett. Jarrett lost it. Here's Derek Sanderson trying to center it. He does, but Nikita intercepts the court. Here comes Coral. Yes, in the huh? Ruins zone back to Makita. Good stick saved by Johnson. Dennis Hull in the corner. He and Sanderson fight for it. Now Ori comes in. Not pulled down. Coral in the man. And that centered it. Eddie Johnson intercepted it. Now Dennis Hull. The Makita. Centered and Bobby Orr breaks it up and flips the puck off the boards to center. The Hawks are out playing him, Mark. Korab, number 22, the big Hawk defenseman to Jarrett, to Makita. Broken up by Ori, he shot at the center. Now here comes Korab into Makita to Dennis Hull. And it's offside. Outside, outside. Dennis Hull was in ahead of the play over on the left wing. And we were talking about the Esposito brothers. There's Dennis Hull. Fine left winger in his own right. And the younger brother of hockey's golden jet, Bobby Hull. He didn't pull the trigger. He heard the onside whistle. And he was dead on that net with Johnson just in front of him. He's got one of the heaviest shots, if not the heaviest in the National Hockey League, and he's terribly dangerous any place around the blue line. Yes, much Darryl. closer, of course. Now Mark caught for the Bruins to Orr. Bobby Orr gives it to Sanderson. Back to Rick Smith. Smith in his own zone for Boston. Drops it to Orr. Orr spins to get away from Makita. Makita still after it. Orr gives it to Rick Smith. Now out on right nice lane to pass. Sanderson. Derek Sanderson shoots the puck into the Blackhawk zone. And Coral, number 20, is back to get it. Gives the puck to Jarrett. Jarrett shoots at the center, knocked down by Rick Smith. Shot into the hot zone with Sanderson, trapped in there offside at the blue line. We'll have to watch, Dan, because I've only seen it one time, but outside of Stan McKee Chicago was conceding Bobby Orr movement out of his own end. Uh, a guy who is as skillful as Bobby with a stick has a tendency to embarrass you if you get awfully close, but certainly it was only Makita that seemed to be doing any kind of checking at all on him. Billy Ray, the Hawk coach, says he feels that he likes to stop Orr before he gets underway. I've heard other coaches in the National Hockey League say, we'll let him come out of his own end and try and keep him on one side and bottle him up that way. So there are different ways and different thoughts on how to handle Mr. Orr. Puck shot into the Bruins zone. McKenzie back to get it. Wardlow bumped him against the board. Now it's Dallas Smith trying to shoot it out, held in by Stapleton. The board low to Angotti. Scores! Scores! Beautiful passing play with Bordelow and Angotti. Blackhawks. Lou Angotti with those terribly quick reflexes just made the perfect move at the right time. Bordelow comes up with the puck. Now look at Angotti picking a small hole right behind him and Hammond's got the clean shot. It might have caromed off somebody or between his legs. But it was a beautiful setup flat pass from Bordelow to Angotti. Lou never hesitated, dropped the puck behind him, continued in looking for a rebound. He didn't need it. Jim Pappen gets the goal, and the Hawks take the early lead, one to nothing. Now Green shoots it into the Chicago zone. Bill White back to get it, tried to clear it out. Smith held it in, but here comes Stapleton, number 12. Passes to Angotti. Lou Angotti moving into the slot, drops it to White. Bill White over to Stapleton. Stapleton a shot, that's wide of the net. Now Pappen in behind the net, trying to center it. Here's Chris Portolo, number 23, back on the point. The White, his shot blocked by Dallas Smith, who clears it to center ice. 
Bob Busick well, sticks down into the uh, Chicago zone. The Chris Bortolo, number 23 yeah, for the Hawks, obtained a couple of weeks ago in a trade from St. Louis. Passes it out to Angotti. Here's Angotti moving in with Bortolo. The shot deflects wide. Now Pappen. Now Nestorinko in the corner centered it. Goes all the way to center. Stapleton back to get it. To Bill White, now to Bortolo. He didn't see it, and here comes Stanfield. Bumped by Stapleton, and Bill White gets the puck. Clears it to center ice. Ted Green for the Bruins. To Stanfield. Now here's Nestorinko, a lead pass to Pitt Martin that was behind him, or Martin would have had a breakaway. Ted Green, number six for the Bruins, who trail 1-0. Out on left wing to Bailey. That's broken up by Nestorinko and cleared back into the growing zone on an offside. Johnny McKenzie and Christian Bordelow almost had a stick fight going. They were making motions like they were going to spear each other. And as McKenzie skated over to his own bench, he stopped momentarily in front of Bordelow on Chicago's bench and mouthed off a little bit. I don't know whether they hate each other from the last picture or not, Dan, but it could be something. Bordelow was obtained by the Hawks a couple of weeks ago in a trade with St. Louis that saw Danny O'Shea traded from Chicago to St. Louis. Here's Joan Ory out on left wing to Bailey. Bailey shooting it off the boards to center. Goes to the Hawk line and Jarrett has it to Bobby Hull. He's checked by Orr but got it into the Bruin zone. Ory shoots it to Phil Esposito who circles back. Esposito number seven ahead to Orr. Orr stick handling beautifully. Moves oh, down for the shot. Blocked by Martin. Orr has it again. Into the corner and Nestorinko intercepts. Eric Nestorinko dropping it back to Jarrett. Jarrett to Bobby Hull to Korab. Korab shot at the center. Goes to the Bruin line and Orr has it. Orr to Bailey. Ace Bailey number 14. Passing it now to Cashman. Cashman a shot from a bad angle and he fired it wide. And Pitt Martin has it for the hop. Martin, number seven, gives it to Nestorinko off his stick, and Esposito shoots at the center ice. Korab for the Hawks. Shooting it over onto an open wing. Bailey gets it for the Bruins. Clears it back into the Chicago zone, and Korab, number 22, takes over. Flips it to center as Ori couldn't hold it in, and Bobby Orr, number four, is back to get it. One to nothing for the Blackhawks over the Bruins as we have passed the 10-minute mark in the first period. Orr. To Don Ory. He's checked by Nestorinko. And they hold it against the boards just on the Chicago side of center ice, and we'll have a face off there. Take a second look at a real pretty goal. There's Angotti with the pass behind him and the perfect position. Angotti is in looking for the rebound that never comes. I didn't realize until we got the side angle how far out Johnson had come for that one. Seemed to hit his pad and bounce between his legs, but. It wound up in the Bruin goal, and the Hawks lead one to nothing. Rick Smith, number 10, gives the puck to Derek Sanderson. Sanderson out to Westfall, number 18. He comes to center, shooting it into the Hawk zone. Here's Marcott in after it. He goes to the Carl and the shot. Now Westfall behind the net, cleared it. Cleared away by Stapleton, and Makita has it. Tried to shoot it out, it's held in. Here's Westfall for the Bruins, over on left wing to Marcott. He cleared it around behind the net to Sanderson. Derek Sanderson centering it back and Cliff Coral, number 20, has it for the Hawks to Dennis Hull. Back to Coral. Coral along the boards is checked. Now gets it again behind the net to Makita. He missed it. Here's Dennis Hull to Makita. Makita centers to Dennis Hull. Backhand can't get it away. Ball gets it to Coral. Cliff Coral for the Hawks. Taken out of the play and Westfall has it. A pass to Sanderson, and it bounced off his stick. Bill White gets it. Out to Coral. Tied up by Marcotte. Here's Makita, number 21. Back to Stapleton. Passing it into Coral. Lost it, and Sanderson shoots at the center. Bill White fires the puck in. Eddie Johnston bobbled it and cleared it to the side of the net, and Westfall has it, number 18. One to nothing for the Hawks as Westfall moves out on right wing. Shoots it into the Blackhawks zone, and that sends Stapleton, number 12, back to get it for the Blackhawks. Stapleton, a very mobile defenseman, comes to his own line to center. Head to Angotti. And he's pumped and knocked down by Dallas Smith. Rick Smith gets the puck, passes to McKenzie, back to Dallas Smith. 
Dallas Smith shooting it into the Hawk zone. Tony Esposito. Third it to the side. Busick steals it. Centered it, but Bill White intercepted. White to Angotti. Angotti in his own end of the rim. Passes it up to Pappen. Pappen at center was checked by Stansfield. He gives it to Orr. Orr moving into the Hawk zone. Chased into the corner. Orr behind that net. Back on the point to Don Orr. Ori winds up for the shot. That hit Pappen and bounces to center. Ori is there to get it. Waits for his team to get onside. Shoots it back into the Hawk zone. Bill White. Passes to Angotti. Off his stick and Orr gets it. Bobby Orr. Shooting it into the Black Hawk zone. Stapleton now to Bill White. We've had very few whistles here in the opening period. White number two. Into the Bruins zone. To Bordelow. Bordelow at a bad angle. Checked by Orr. And back comes Orr, number four. With McKenzie and Busick. Leaves it for Busick. The shot. Esposito picks it out. As Orr set up Tony. Threw it in right in the slot and let go a hard shot. Pappen's long shot. Caught by Eddie Johnston. And Stanfield. Gets it. Stanfield to McKenzie. Now to Don Orr. Ore to center ice, shooting it into the Blackhawk zone, and Bobby Hull starts out on left wing. Hull stops as he's checked by Cashman. Now here comes Bobby Hull, number nine, into the Bruins zone, stick handling beautifully, centers it. Pitt Martin couldn't get it, and Rick Smith has it. Passes to Bailey. Now Korab at the blue line. Flips it in to Pitt Martin, out of Bobby Hull. Hull centering it. Here's Jarrett at the point. A shot! Shot from the save. Now Pitt Martin with the rebound. Tried to drop it back, and it hit Stanfield's stick and deflects back into the Hawk zone. Korab to Jarrett. Quite a first period we have going here at Chicago Stadium. One to nothing for the Blackhawks. The action has stopped here in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. Five and a half minutes left in the first period. The Blackhawks leading the Bruins one to nothing. Here's Jerry Korab for Chicago in his own end to Jarrett. Jarrett leads the four-man rush to center into Pitt Martin, and Nestor Ickler is in ahead of the play at the Bruin blue line. Pitt Martin, number seven for the Blackhawks, was a doubtful starter for today's game, but has taken his regular turn. He has been bedded down with the flu. One of the fine small players in hockey is Pitt Martin. Here's Daly. Back to Dallas Smith. Now to Esposito. He's checked by Bobby Hull. Hull with the slap shot. That hit Rick Smith. And that hurt him. Smith limps around. Here's Korab now to Bobby Hull. Smith ties up Hull. Going to be a penalty on a delayed penalty. Here's Nestorico. Lost it to Esposito. Play is called. And Rick Smith is going to get a holding penalty for Boston. The action has stopped here in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. I'm Joe Garageau, along with hockey great Bobby Hall. We'll demonstrate the stay moist power of Rapid Shave. Here's Bobby lathered up. Now watch him in action, while Rapid Shave's exclusive blend of deep wetting agents holds in moisture. Hey, you really move it, Bobby. How's the Rapid Shave? Still moist, Joe. Sure is. For a really moist shave, get Rapid Shave. Regular lime or menthol mint. It stays moist all shave long. So the Boston Bruins, Rick Smith, gets the game's first penalty for holding. And the Chicago Blackhawks send out their power play. Billy Ray has Dan Makita with Cliff Coral and Dennis Hull up front. Bobby Hull and Stapleton as point men. Sanderson clears the puck to center, and here comes Rick Smith. His shot wide of the goal. Westfall is in there to get it. Westfall along the board. Check. Dennis Hull passes it to Stapleton. Pat Stapleton along left wing, passing to Makita. Makita gives it to Coral. Coral drop pass to Makita, and the shot is blocked at the defense, and Bobby Orr comes up with it. Orr flips it back behind his own net, gets away from Makita, shooting it off the boards and down the ice. And the Blackhawks have to go back and get it. The Hawks have scored 38 power play goals this season. And they have the man advantage right now. 
Minute 15 left in the penalty as the Hawks clear it in. Orr is there to get it. And as soon as he touches it, the Hawks are called for icing. Next Sunday, CBS will bring you another National Hockey League game with the Philadelphia Flyers meeting the Detroit Red Wings at 1.30 Eastern time. That should be a good one. The Flyers fighting for a playoff spot in the West Division. The Red Wings doing the same thing over in the East Division. An extremely important game for both clubs. 1.30 Eastern time, Detroit Red Wings and the Philadelphia Flyers next Sunday. Talked about the Hawks' power play. They've scored 38 power play goals. The Bruins lead the league with 54. And the Bruins are also dangerous when a man short. They have scored 13 goals while a man short. They scored two of them last night. So the Hawks have to watch that part of the Boston game, too. Here's Bill White, number two, out to Dennis Hall. Hall with the long slap shot caught by Eddie Johnson. He gives it to Dallas Smith. Smith in the corner trying to clear it out. Gets it to Westfall. Stapleton ties him up. Dennis Hall comes up, gets the puck. Center in it, or intercepted. Now Makita to Stapleton. Stapleton to Bill White. White lets the slap shot go. It's wide of the net. Dennis Hall against Westfall, and Westfall clears it down the ice. 40 seconds left in the Bruin penalty. Here's Bill White at center to Dennis Hall. Hall moving into Pappen. Pappen into Angotti. He couldn't get the shot. Now Pappen fanned on it. Here's Angotti working it in front. Back to Pappen. Pappen over on the left wing boards to Stapleton. His shot deflects and Orr has it for the Bruins. Checked by Dennis Hall and Stapleton. Orr gets it loose to Sanderson. Sanderson coming into the zone. Drop pass to Westfall. A shot. And the save made by Estefito. And there's going to be a penalty to Bill White for interfering with Derek Sanderson. And now each team will be a man short. The action has stopped here in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. One reason why you may want to consider mutual funds today, tomorrow. The Oppenheimer Fund is a mutual fund in which the management takes what it considers prudent risks in an effort to make your money grow. Oppenheimer Management Corporation, distributors of the Oppenheimer Fund, the Oppenheimer AIM Fund, and the Oppenheimer Time Fund. Rick Smith of the Bruins has only six seconds left in his penalty. Bill White going off for Chicago here at 16.57 in the first period. So in six seconds, when Smith comes back on, the Bruins will have the man advantage. Face off in the Hawk zone between Stan Makita and Phil Esposito. Esposito gets the draw to Bobby Orr with a booming shot. That one hit Jarrett, and he's injured after stopping the Orr shot. Bobby Hull clears it to center. Orr has it. And Rick Smith is back on, so the Bruins have the man advantage. Here's Stanfield passing to Bobby Orr. Orr moving into the Hawk zone, trying to drop it back. Bobby Hull knocks it down. Hull tried to shoot it up and hit the through Hood. Jarrett now passes it up to Pitt Martin. Martin with a long shot. Wide of the net, Stanfield playing the point on the power play with Orr, gives it to Bobby Orr. Bruins have the man advantage. They trail one to nothing. Orr to center ice. Into Esposito. Korab knocked it away, and Busick was in ahead of the play over on left wing, offside. Chicago won, the Bruins nothing. With a minute 25 left in the Blackhawk penalty to Bill White. Esposito, McKenzie, and Busick up front on the Boston power play. Here's Stanfield at the blue line holding it in. Lost it to Pitt Martin. Here he comes with Bobby Hull. The pass to Hull, and it's knocked down by Stanfield and cleared away. And Stanfield had to hustle back to cover Hull. Now John McKenzie, number 19, to Stanfield. Stanfield shooting it off the boards into the Blackhawk zone. Pitt Martin back of the net. Tried to shoot it out at Stanfield holding it in. Here comes Stanfield with a booming shot that deflects wide of the net. Bobby Orr at the other point to Stanfield. Stanfield couldn't control it and Hull gets it for the Hawks to Pitt Martin. Martin against Orr. And 
Orr skated him off. Martin flips it into the corner. Stanfield is back to go. He gives it to Phil Esposito. Esposito now to center ice. 25 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Esposito in on goal. Music the shot. Esposito the save. McKenzie behind the net. Tied up by Bobby Hull. Korab is in there. Puck goes loose and Stapleton gets it. Stapleton back of the net to McKenzie. McKenzie trying to center it. Here's Esposito. As the bumping gets fierce in behind that net, Korab bumps Esposito. And we'll have a face-off in the Chicago zone. Four seconds left in the penalty to Bill White. Bobby Hull and McKenzie really bumped each other along the boards in behind the Chicago goal, and then Korab got into it. He gave Esposito a good shot, but no penalties called on the play. A minute and seven seconds left in the first period. Bruins, Esposito argues with the referee, Bruce Hood. Esposito with Ace Bailey on left wing. Wayne Cashman over on right wing. Cashman is usually the left winger on that line, but with the injury to Hodge, he moved over to right wing. Then Walton, who was playing left wing, is injured, so Bailey is playing there. There's a shot, they score! Esposito! Let the, or let the shot go. I think Esposito deflected it in. We'll have to wait for the official announcement, and it's tied 1-1. That's a power play goal. Esposito got the draw to Orr. Orr shot. And there's Esposito deflecting it right between Tony Esposito's legs. And Phil Esposito fires in his 50th goal of the season. Or let the shot go. And there's another example of how important a face-off is in the other team's end of the ring. Esposito got the draw to Orr. He let the shot go. And Esposito cut in front of the net and deflected it in. And it's 1-1. Bill Esposito gets his 50th goal against his brother Tony Esposito. One minute left in the period. It's 1-1. Here's Makita dropping it back to Bill White. Out to Coral who shoots at the center. Now Dallas Smith to Bailey. Bailey moving into the hot zone. Along the board. Lost it. Stapleton clears it to center. Rick Smith has it. Back to Dallas Smith to Phil Esposito. Makita watching Esposito, who looks up at the clock that shows 30 seconds left. He flips it off of Coral Stick into the Blackhawk zone, and Bill White is back there to go. White to Coral. Bailey in forechecking. It's over now to Stapleton. Bailey intercepts that pass. Passes to Esposito. Quick shot, and Tony Esposito, a good pad save. Then he stopped Cashman from the short side. Hawks, Coral, trying to get it out. Ten seconds left in the period. Here's Makita at center ice. Comes into the hot zone. Esposito tied him up. And Rick Smith is back to get it. Flipping it on the boards as the siren goes to end the first period here at Chicago Stadium. That's the end of the first period with the score. The Chicago Blackhawks won and the Boston Bruins won. Leaving your life. We'll return to Chicago Stadium after this pause for station identification. Hi again, everyone. Dan Kelly up in our broadcast booth here at Chicago Stadium. Fairly evenly matched first period. I thought the Bruins uh, came along a lot stronger in the second part of the period after the Hawks had uh, more or less uh, had the advantage in the first part of the period. Jim Pappen scored the game's first goal his 20th of the year to put Chicago ahead one to nothing. But then Phil Esposito came back on a typical Phil Esposito goal. He got the draw on the faceoff back to Orr and then hustled right into the slot in front of the net and deflected in Orr's shot for his 50th goal, the second year in a row that Phil Esposito has passed the 50 goal mark. And I was talking to some of the Boston sports writers prior to today's game and they were telling me that Esposito, after being congratulated on getting his 100th point last night, said, yeah, now I'd love to score my 50th goal today against Tony. And of course, Tony is his brother, Tony Esposito. So a fine first period, 1-1 between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Boston Bruins. Let's go down to CBS Control now, and here's Jim Gordon. Thank you, Dan. Just in case your morning paper missed some of the late scores, here's the way they went last night. 
First of all, Detroit beat Pittsburgh. The final score, 6-2. to two. Good news for Detroit. They've been trying to pick up points all this week uh, so they can improve their position against Toronto. As you will see, they didn't quite do it. Philadelphia and Montreal. The final score, Montreal 3, Philadelphia 1. Buffalo and Toronto. Toronto 4. I beg your pardon, Montreal 3 and Philadelphia 1. Buffalo and Toronto. Toronto 4 and Buffalo 1. Boston and Minnesota, they had two shorthanded goals on the same power play last night, these Boston Bruins. The final score, Boston 6, Minnesota 4. I believe that's the second time they've been able to do that, once again, St. Louis before. Vancouver and Los Angeles, the final score, Los Angeles 5. They broke a losing streak over Vancouver with just three points. Incidentally, the only highlights we have for you this week because of the terrible weather conditions uh, come from Friday night, Vancouver's game against St. Louis. In case you don't know it, we've had snow trouble all over the country. First goal in a perfect power play and a lost stick. This is one you really have to watch. The power play goal comes just off the left side. Watch the beautiful work by the point men here. And watch for Ted Taylor at the top of your screen. This is the man who finally gets loose. As you know, the real objective of any power play is to get one man free. Taylor moving in close to the net in the white jersey for Vancouver and has just about perfect position right here. Now watch the goaltender's stick as we resume live play here. Makes his move and loses his stick. Sliding into the corner. We'll locate it for you in just a couple of seconds and also point out the defenseman who makes a heck of a move here. There's the stick with the arrow. Watch the move number 12 makes when he realizes the goaltender doesn't have a stick and needs some kind of help. Any stick in a storm. And he almost makes the save. The first one is all right. The second one, there's Ted Taylor. Boudreaux made it 2 nothing in favor of Vancouver just a short time later. And then Rosie Paymont scores after a fine blue line check by Greg Boddy on Thompson. Paymount number 15. We just had him silhouetted for you. Watch this beautiful check at the blue line. Little poke, half sweep. Thompson didn't even know he'd lost it. Right to Boudreaux, who suddenly realizes he's got a two-on-one and wastes no time across the blue line. That made it 3 nothing. Vancouver over St. Louis. Here's a picture of a beaten goaltender, but he sure died hard. Here's the man who beat him. His name is Gary Younger, and it wasn't all that easy. Tell you what, let's, let's roll back in time a little bit. Wouldn't you like to be able to see him like this? As a matter of fact, the goaltender would just love to have this one back. We'll roll back and show you exactly how this one started out and what a fine job Wilson really did. Unger, incidentally, had to play the puck absolutely perfectly or he never would have been able to score, even though he was in tight. All the way back, notice how the defenseman also did a good job clearing the man. Here comes the initial slap shot. Watch the first save. It's a beauty. And a second. Now Wilson has to go down. He's lost his balance. Sees the puck, tries to cover up, and kick saves it. Rolling to his right, he realizes he's got to stretch the full length of that goal, and now realizes he's vulnerable on top. As Unger takes the shot, he gets both legs up, but not quite in time. Good goal by Unger. I had to the puck and certainly did it. Stewart scores for St. Louis to make it 4-1. And look at the three men in front of the net. Talk about a scream. And all it takes is a slap shot. And that's it. Vancouver slapping out, snapping out of a losing string at the expense of St. Louis. We're really involved in a fight in the Western Division. Wish to thank station KPLR-TV, Channel 11 in St. Louis for their videotape highlights. We'll be back with more hockey from Chicago Stadium in just a moment. I want to remind you that next weekend, CBS will bring you the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic, the richest golf tournament of the 1972 PGA Golf Tour, with $260,000 in prize money. All of the top pros will be competing at the Inverary Country Club in Lauder Hill, Florida, with $52,000 to the winner. That's next weekend. Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic here on CBS. We're getting ready to start the second period in the first period. The Blackhawks outshot the Bruins 8-7. to seven. 
And it's a 1-1 tie as we look at Bobby Hull and the Blackhawks coming onto the ice. Hawks outshot the Bruins 8-7. Jim Pappen scored the Chicago goal, and it was Phil Esposito scoring for the Boston Bruins for Esposito, his 50th of the year. The second time that Phil Esposito has scored 50 or more goals in a season. Last season, of course, was the other year, and he scored a fantastic 76 goals and 76 assists for 152 points. All set for the face-off as referee Bruce Hood gets ready to drop the puck between Pitt Martin and Esposito. Daly for the Bruins clears it back into his own zone, and Bobby Orr is back to get it. Orr gives the puck to Esposito. Esposito dropping it back to Orr again. Now to Esposito. He's tied up by Jarrett and knocked off balance. Big Jerry Korab for the Hawks. Passes to Bobby Hull. Esposito chases Hull into the corner. Hull gives it to Jarrett. Jarrett checked by Cashman. Has to go back for it. Jarrett shooting it around on the right wing boards to Nestorinko. He's checked by Bailey. Now Korab comes up with the puck. Here comes Core after center ice on left wing to Bobby Hull. Hull with a burst of speed into the corner, centering it. Cleared away. Pitt Martin had a chance. Here's Jarrett a drive. And Don Ory fell in front of it to block it. Bouncing in front of the net. Hull couldn't get a shot. And Cashman for the Bruins clears at the center. Jarrett to Bobby Hull. Shooting it to the Bruin line and back comes Orr. Orr. Trying to go around Bobby Hull. Hull took him out of the play and knocked him down. Two of the game's greatest stars colliding in the corner. Bobby Hull and Bobby Orr. Now Hull gives the puck to Pitt Martin. Martin on right wing moves in and is shot to flex off Ori and goes up over the glass and Ori then knocked Martin down. The action has stopped in the second... Puck is shot into the Chicago zone. Stapleton is back to get it, and as soon as he touches it, the play is called with an icing call against the Boston Bruins, and the faceoff will go down into the Boston zone. We've played one minute and 26 seconds of the first period. Bruins won, the Blackhawks won. Fifth meeting this season between these two teams, and the Bruins have an edge, winning three and losing one. Bruins won by scores of 2-1, 5-1, and 4-2. There's Bill White, a shot that's blocked. Now Westfall for Boston, a long pass, knocked down by Stapleton. And Stan Makita, number 21, has it, dropping it back to Bill White. White, pass at center for Makita, intercepted by Rick Smith. Over to Mark Trott, he shoots it into the hot zone. Stapleton, number 12, to Dennis Hall. Sanderson steals it from him. The West ball back to Sanderson, and Stapleton couldn't get it out. Now here's Rick Smith moving in front. He's knocked down before he could get the shot away. And Quirrell has it for the Hawks. A long pass to Dennis Hull. Was all the way down the ice. West ball back to touch it. And this time it's Chicago that's called for Iser. The Blackhawks played last night, or had yesterday off at least. The Bruins played last night in Minnesota. There's Billy Ray, the coach of the Blackhawks. He's in his ninth season behind the Hawk bench. Now here's Westfall. Backhand shot to flex off White. Sanderson centered it. Dennis Hull gets the puck and clears it to Bill White. Hawks penned up in their own zone at this point. Over to Stapleton. Stapleton headmans the puck to Makita. Into Dennis Hull. His booming shot. And Eddie Johnson a fine stop on Dennis Hull. Here's Sanderson. The Dallas Smith. Flipping it into Mark Cott, and it's called at an offside at the Chicago Blackhawk blue line. Tom Johnson, the Bruin coach, he's in his second year behind the Boston bench. Formerly played with the Bruins, but spent the major part of his playing career with the Montreal Canadiens. And what a hockey club the Canadiens had 
during Tom Johnson's days with them. They won five consecutive Stanley Cups from 1955 to 1960. Puck is shot to center ice. Don Ory, number 26, back to get it. Ory at center to Stanfield, number 17. Stanfield gives the puck to Orr, and here comes Orr leading the Bruin rush, trying to go around Korab. Korab bumps it against the boards in the corner. Now Orr and Korab push and shove at one another. There's Orr pushing back at Korab. They drop their sticks and gloves, and the linesmen jump between them. Bobby Orr and Big Jerry Korab. And they're still trying to get at one another. Linesman Neil Armstrong has a hold of Orr, who has something to say to Korab. And they're going to the penalty box. A hard check against the boards, and he comes back again here. This is where Orr took exception to it. And Bobby decides he'll do a little on his own and takes a hard elbow and got a pretty good glove hand shot in there. The action and the fighting has stopped here in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. Jerry Korab and Bobby Orr get two-minute minor penalties for roughing, so each team is a man short. From the faceoff, Stapleton out to Jim Pappen. He gives it to Lou Angotti. He's checked by Stanfield, and McKenzie was already in the hawk zone, so it's called an outside at the Chicago Blue Line. That was only a roughing penalty. They never really came to a fight, although Orr threw a pretty good glove hand shot. Incidentally, we speak so much about Bobby's tremendous playing abilities. He also fights very well. He does it all. Korab, of course, would be one heck of an opponent. He's a big one. 6'2", 215 pounds, or 5'11", 195, or 190. Here's Bill White, passing it over to Stapleton. Stapleton. Shoots it all the way down into the Bruin zone. Stanfield is back to get it, and as soon as he touches it, the Blackhawks are called for icing, and the faceoff will be back in the Chicago zone. Talked about the earlier meetings between these two teams. The Hawks won the first game this year, 3-1. to one. There's Orr in the penalty box. And then the Bruins came back and won the next game by scores of 2-1, 5-1, and 4-2. Going to face off at center ice. As apparently there was a discrepancy on whether it was an icing call or not. Now Bill White is back to get it. White around on the boards to Pat Stapleton. He gives the puck to little Lou Angotti. Angotti not flying by McKenzie. Here comes Pappen for the Hawks. Pappen and Stanfield into the corner. Pappen gets the puck to Bill White. White trying to center it. Rick Smith intercepts it. It's loose at the side of the net. Here's Pappen out to White at the blue line. White with a shot. Johnston a good save. Another one on Angotti. On on now Angotti centers to Pappen. And he fired it wide from a bad angle. White into the corner. And it's Dallas Smith intercepting it around on the boards to Rick Smith. Smith to Stanfield. He passes it out to McKenzie on left wing to Dallas Smith. Smith moving in with a shot that deflects off Bill White. High and wide of the net. Stapleton to Bobby Hull. Stanfield beats him to the puck. Gives it to John McKenzie. McKenzie trying to hold it in. And Bobby Hull gets it for the Blackhawks. Number nine to White. White passing it to Pitt Martin along the boards. Martin cuts back and gives the puck to Hull in the Chicago zone. Each team a man short. Hull dropping it back. It goes to Stapleton. Here comes Stapleton. A fine rushing defenseman into Pitt Martin. Martin, stick handling, flips it to the side of the Bruin goal, and Cashman is back to get it. Wayne Cashman around to Rick Smith. Smith back to Cashman. He deflects it to center ice. Stapleton gets it to Bill White. White to Pitt Martin. Martin, lead pass to Bobby Hull. Hull moving in on the left wing. The shot, and Eddie Johnston came out, made the save. Orr and Korabber back on, so the teams are at full strength. Dallas Smith, a pass to Orr. He races into the hot zone after it. Gets there first, so it's onside. Orr with a great burst of speed. And he's checked for Pitt Martin. Knocked flying behind the net by Cashman. Here's Bobby Hull. Back to the net. Hull goes to get it himself. Some good body checking in this game so far. Now the Hawks having trouble. Now Bobby Hull carries the puck out of his own zone to center. He's checked. 
Nestorinko picks it up. Nestorinko moving into the hot zone to the Bruins zone. Orr breaks it up, and here comes Orr to center. Orr, a left wing pass to Bailey was just behind him. And Nestorinko has it. He shoots it to center. Ori knocked it down. Phil Esposito for the Bruins to cast it. Shooting it into the hot zone. Martin broke it up. Bill White shoots it to center. Here's Orr. Moves in with a booming shot. Esposito got his glove on it. And fortunately he did. It was headed right at his face. Back comes Pitt Martin. A three on two break for the Hawks. Over to Bobby Hull. And Hull had cut in behind the play. And the pass went to an open win. Now the Bruins come back. Orr clearing it into the Chicago zone. Esposito shooting it over onto the boards. Korab gets it for the Blackhawks. To Jarrett. Now up to Pitt Martin. Martin to center right. Moving into the Bruins zone. Flipped it in front and Orr is there to intercept it. Orr gives it to Esposito. And Orr seems to be everywhere. Here's Esposito with a shot. And Tony Esposito kicked it off with his left pass. Nestorinko. Behind the net to Korab. Korab tied up by Phil Esposito, and they hold it there. And they'll have a face-off in the Chicago zone. We've had some good games on this Game of the Week series this year, Jim, but I don't remember one any better than this one. Got a good combination here today, Dan. Uh, today, Dan. Good crisp play and some good physical hockey for those who like that kind of a game. As you pointed out, the body checking has picked up considerably tail in the first period, and then this period itself. The face-off just to the right side, Chicago's end. Korab trying to clear the puck out, gets it to Coral. To Dennis Hull, he lost it, and Westfall has it. Ed Westfall for the Bruins. Back at his own line, trying to stick handle. Dennis Hull knocked him down, and Westfall winds up falling on top of the puck. And we'll have a face-off just outside the Boston Bruin blue line. There's a good look at Ed Westfall, and then the Chicago bench, Bobby Hull and Jim Pappen. Puck is cleared into the Bruins zone. Rick Smith to Dallas Smith. Dallas Smith out on left wing to Don Marcotte, number 21, to Sanderson. He lost it. Now Sanderson gets it back again into Marcotte, back to Sanderson, closing in. The hard shot is wide of the net. Dallas Smith along the boards, puts it into the corner. Korab trying to clear it. Sanderson intercepted it. He lost it, and Dennis Hull passes to Makita. Dan Makita at center ice to Korab. Korab shoots it into the Bruins zone, and Eddie Johnston... Cleared it behind the net. Here's Dallas Smith. Out to Sanderson. He's checked. Dennis Hall back on the point to Bill White. The shot. Johnston the save and it bounces high in the air. Dallas Smith held it against his chest. And Bruce Hood is right on top of the play. And Dallas Smith is going to get a penalty for closing his hand on the puck. He was right in front. The action has stopped here in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. Um, Once upon a time, a long time ago. It could be called a good penalty. Johnson has no idea where that puck is. And if he bats it away, it's going to be right in front of the net. And so he had to take it. He grabbed it in his hand and he gets the penalty for closing his hand on the puck. And the Hawks have the power play on. Puck shot into the corner. Orr gets it for the Bruins and gets away from Bordalo. And Gotti checked him. But Orr is back to pick it up again. And here's Mr. Orr maneuvering in his own end of the ring. And clears the puck down the ice. Sanderson racing after it. Tony Esposito intercepts it and clears it around on the boards to Stapleton. He couldn't get it out. Here's Rick Smith. And he cuts back to center ice into his own zone as the Bruins kill time in the penalty. Orr takes Smith's pass. Here's Bobby Orr behind that net being watched by Bordalo. And Orr just flips the puck casually down the ice. Stapleton back to get it for the Blackhawks. A minute 15 left in the penalty to the Bruins. Here's Andotti into Bordalo, and it's offside. Bordalo is in ahead of the play on left wing. Might caution our viewers across the country that when you hear people yelling that something that sounds like boo, when number six, Lou Angotti, has the puck, it's not booing for Angotti. They're chanting, Lou, Lou. They love Angotti here in Chicago City. Puck to the Blackhawk blue line. Stapleton to Angotti. Pass to Bordalo. Bordalo moving in with a shot that deflects off or stick and goes up over the glass. Just a beautiful, good, crisp game. 
one one the score we're in the second period with about 11 minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the second period the Boston Bruins and Chicago Blackhawks playing a bit more open brand of hockey than we expected to see generally Chicago sets the pace here at the stadium and they can certainly control the puck against Boston has been wide open 104 left in the penalty here's Stapleton to Bobby Hall Hall with a shot that deflects wide now Dennis Hall back to brother Bobby he flips it into the corner Quarrel behind the net to Stan Makita and Orr takes it away from him. Makita and Orr fight for it on the boards and hold it there. And we'll have another face-off in the Bruins zone. Remember, if you have any questions about the game of hockey, you drop us a line. Post office box 50 in New York City. The National Hockey League questions. We'll ask them just as soon as we can. Shot by Bobby Hull from the faceoff was high over the glass, uh, over the net and off the glass, and Hull is now back into his own zone to pick it up. 30 seconds left in the Bruin penalty to Dallas Smith. Hull gives it to Stapleton. Stapleton clearing it out on right wing to Coral. Coral lead pass to Dennis Hull. Orr is there to intercept it. And Orr seems to be everywhere today, clearing the puck all the way down the ice. 12 seconds left in the penalty as Bobby Hull passes to younger brother Dennis or breaks that up. Or at center ice. Stick handling in. Passes to Westfall. A shot and Esposito. The save on Westfall after a great play by Orr. Now Coral knocked down by Sanderson. Dallas Smith is back on. Ruins at full strength. Here's Dennis Hull shooting the puck into the Boston zone. Makita races in after it. Stan Makita. Flipping it right out in front. Coral couldn't get a stick on it. And Johnny Busick has it for Boston to Orr. Out on the right wing to Westfall. Westfall, a lead pass to Sanderson. He's into the hot zone. Derek Sanderson flipping it over onto the other wing. Here's Busick. Busick back to Dallas Smith. Return pass to Busick. He sent it at Sanderson. Moving in the shot. Esposito to save and the rebound is clear. Now Dallas Smith. In behind the net. Busick loses it and Makita. Gets away from Sanderson. Here's Makita to Dennis Hall. To Bobby Hall. The Hall brothers with Nestorinko. Drop pass to Dennis Hall. Now to Pitt Martin. Over to Nestorinko. Nestorinko checked by Stanfield. And he has to hustle back to center ice to go. Drops it back to Doug Jarrett, number four. Jarrett out to Pitt Martin. Off his stick and Dallas Smith gets it for the Bruins. Bruins won the Hawks. One here in the second period. Pass to McKenzie on right wing. John McKenzie to Stanfield. He missed it. Now Busick gets it to Dallas Smith at the point. The drive caught by Esposito. And Korab clears it on the board. Busick held it in. It goes to Pitt Martin. Bruins putting the pressure on. Here's Dallas Smith flipping it in front. Korab knocks it down to Pitt Martin. He's checked. And Dallas Smith is back at his own blue line to get it for Boston. Over to McKenzie. John McKenzie checked by Jarrett. Jarrett back to Korab. He flipped it to center. Now here's Rick Smith trying to shoot it in, and Jarrett breaks that rush up. Jarrett comes to center ice, shooting the puck off the boards into the Bruin zone. And number 20, Dallas Smith is back to go. Out to Busick. John Busick for the Bruins. Long pass to McKenzie. Bobby Hull intercepts, and here comes Hull on the right wing. Hull stops, trying to center it, does. Just failed to get it to Nestorinko, and McKenzie starts back. Long lead pass to Sandfield, into Busick. A two-on-one break, and it's broken up by Korak. The Bruins had a two-on-one break. Now here's McKenzie moving in. He sent it up. Jarrett knocked it down. And the puck is cleared by Jarrett to Bobby Hull. Oh, oh, he overstates oh. it, and the Hawks are having trouble in their own zone, clearing the puck. Dallas Smith to Cashman. Cashman moving in. Korab blocked the shot, and here comes Korab to center ice. Passing it to Bordelow, who moves in on left wing. Bordelow around one man, trying to center it, and Nestorenko shot it wide. Great play by Bordelow to set up Nestorenko. Now Felix to center ice, number 14. Lost the puck, and Stapleton clears it all the way down into the Bruin zone with Rick Smith going back to touch it, and the Blackhawks are called for icing on the play. Just a beautiful game. 1-1. It's tied. We're in the second period. About seven minutes and 20 seconds to go. Bobby Orr having a beautiful afternoon as he generally does. Look at the way he handles himself. Around one man. Again off the boards. To get around two men playing into perfection. And those nice long strides. 
He moved in on that play and set up Westfall for a good scoring chance. Bill White now to Pappen. Pappen for the Hawks to center, fires it into the corner. Orr is back to get it. Bobby Orr out on left wing to Bailey. Bill White intercepts the pass. He's checked, now Angotti gets it, and Orr chases him back to center ice. Lou Angotti to Pappen. Pappen over on left wing to Bordalo. Bordalo shoots the puck in behind the Bruin goal. It's centered, loose in front. Oh, 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 a great save on Pappen after Bordalo set him up. Now Bill White to Stapleton. Back shot, Johnston, a great skate save. And Eddie Johnston has been sensational in the Bruin goal. Back comes Phil Esposito for Boston. Moving it in, flipped it in front of Cashman, and Pappen knocks that one down. Trying to shoot it up, there's Don. Ooh, what a save by Don he scores. They score on the rebound. The Bruins got the rebound, and Esposito, I think, was the man who tapped it in. You'll hear it many times that it takes sometimes a great save by your own goaltender to inspire a team. Johnson made two, and the Bruins, inspired or whatever, came down and just kept up the pressure. Look at this beautiful move by Esposito in front of his sprawling brother. And don't think that Tony Esposito hadn't made a tremendous save on the shot from the left point by Orris. But it was really all set up by Johnson's incredible antics down at the other end. On that first save, Dan, I didn't think he was within 10 feet of that net. And all of a sudden, he was there. There's Phil Esposito, who got the goal, his second of the game, and his 51st of the season. So Phil Esposito has scored a pair of goals on younger brother Tony. And Tony Esposito did not have a chance on that one. Now the Hawks Lacroix on the ice for the first time clears it into the Bruin zone. Don Ore is back to get it. Here's Ore out on right wing to McKenzie. McKenzie for the Bruins. A flip shot caught by Tony Esposito. He throws it to Korak. Gary Korak trying to clear it out. Now it's picked up by Andre Lacroix, number 18. Lacroix. Out with Campbell and Maggs for the first time in the game. Gives it to Darrell Maggs. His shot is blocked. Here's Maggs in the corner, centering it, and Stanfield intercepted it. Now Stanfield out to Busick. Lead pass to McKenzie, and Doug Jarrett intercepted it. Here comes Jarrett to center ice. Bumps into Maggs. Maggs falls, but cleared it into the Bruins zone. And Orr is back to gun. Bruins lead 2-1. to one, Both the goals by Phil Esposito. Now Bobby Orr. To Don Ori. Ori shooting the puck around the board. That into the playing some Hawks game, zone. Huh? Brian Campbell there to get it for Chicago. Out to May. Oh, May over the ice. Leading it through to Lacroix. Lacroix moving in on left wing with a shot and he fired it high and wide. Now Stanfield for Boston trying to get it out. Does. Here's Mark Cock racing after the loose puck. Racing in, centered it. Garrett knocked it down and Mags takes over for Chicago. Out on left wing to Andre Lacroix. Lacroix, number 18. Trying to center it back. Comes near the blue line. Korab held it in, but hit Campbell with his shot. And it bounces to center. Brian Campbell near his own blue line. The center ice. Feeds it into Makita. Over to Mags. Mags with a shot. He fires that wide. Now Stapleton at the point. Into Campbell. Campbell is checked by Sanderson. And Sanderson gives it to Orr, who comes to center. Bobby! Flat shot. Caught by Esposito. And it's... Number 22, Korab for the Blackhawks. Lead pass at center to Makita to Dennis Hall. And it's offside. Dennis Hall just in a little bit ahead of the play over on left wing. Some game, huh? They've been going at top speed all the time. Four minutes in 35 seconds left in the second period. The Boston Bruins, two. The Chicago Blackhawks, one. The Hawks led one nothing on a goal by Pappen. And then Phil Esposito has come back to score two in a row to give the Bruins a two-to-one lead. Now it's Dallas Smith shooting that puck into the box zone, and it's called in an offside, and the faceoff will be out near the center ice red line, just on the Chicago side of center ice. There's Ted Green, Don Ory, Ace Bailey, Phil Esposito, Cashman over at that Bruin bench. Now Dallas Smith, number 20, passing to Sanderson. Sanderson shoots the puck into the Hawks zone and back to pick it up is Whitey Stapleton. 
Stapleton being watched by Westfall. Shoots it to just outside the blue line. Dallas Smith carries back in. Now passing to Sanderson. Sanderson centered it. Oh, and Tony Esposito cleared it away just in time. Bruins Westfall holding it in. Puck in behind the net to Sanderson. Sanderson centering it. Nikita knocks it down to Stapleton behind the net. Sanderson steals it, tried to center it. And Dennis Hall has it for the Blackhawks. Hawks, led by Dennis Hull to Makita. He fires it in. Johnston out of the net to clear it. Dennis Hull gets it behind the net to Makita. There's Stan Makita centering it. No one is there, and Westfall feeds it to Sanderson as the Bruins come back. On left wing to Mark Cox. Back to Dallas Smith and Makita. Has it for the Hawks to Dennis Hull. One on one. Hull moving against Rick Smith. Let's the shot go, and it's wide of the net. Now Makita for Chicago. Checked along the boards, and the Bruins clear at the center. Bill White to Stapleton. Return pass to White. White shooting it off the boards into the Bruins zone. He was on his own side of center when he shot it in, so the Blackhawks are called for icing. The action has stopped here in the second period, so let's pause for a moment. Three minutes and eight seconds left in the second period. The Boston Bruins two, the Chicago Blackhawks one. Esposito with Bailey and Cashman out for the Bruins. Bailey back on the point to Ore. He cleared it around behind the hot goal. Here's Bailey sitting in and kill Esposito. Deflected it just wide. Esposito behind the net, couldn't get it. Now Bailey sent it. Kill Esposito to Cashman. He shoots, he scores! And that makes it 3-1. to one. As the Bruins have been coming on stronger as the game goes on, Puck was centered. Phil Esposito had a chance first. He gives it to Cashman, and Cashman fired it by Tony Esposito from close in. And that makes it 3-1 to one for the Bruins. The program is really interested. And Phil Esposito will get an assist on the play, as well as Bailey. Bailey centered it from behind the net to Esposito, who gave it to Cashman. Now Bobby Orr to Don Orr. Out to Bailey. Bailey to Cashman. He turns at center ice. Passing it into Orr, who deflects it into the hot zone. And back to get it is number 22, Jerry Korab. Korab on left wing to Jarrett. Jarrett to Pitt Martin. Martin moving into the Bruins zone. Checked by Bailey. There's Nestorinko behind the net. Tied up by Cashman and Bobby Orr comes up with the puck. Here's Orr moving it out along the boards to Bailey. Bailey for the Bruins gives it to Cashman who comes to center with Esposito. And it's offside. Phil Esposito a little anxious, over anxious over on the right wing. Went in ahead of the play. Bill Esposito and Bailey get the assists on the goal by Cashman at 17.06. And it's 3-1 for the Boston Bruins. For Wayne Cashman, his 17th goal of the season. Now here's Pappen for Chicago. He gives the puck to Stapleton. Pat Stapleton working his way to center ice. Lost it, and here comes Bill Esposito for the Bruins. Moving in. Tied up, but tries to center it, does. Bill White intercepts it and gives it to the little Lou Angotti. Angotti for the Hawks, cuts back of his own net. Drops it back to Bill White. White out to Bordalo. Off his stick and Cashman drops it back to Orr. Less than two minutes, a minute 45 left in the period. Here's Orr. 97 WWDJ Hackett. Jim, you're... Then you use the dandruff on Wednesday and the dandruff back on Thursday? Jim, maybe it's not really you got dandruff. Ask your doctor. Get hidden shoulders. I don't believe I ate the whole thing. You ate it, Ralph. I don't believe I ate the whole thing. Hi. Take an Alka-Seltzer. I ate the whole thing. Happened, centered it, but it went right onto Rick Smith's stick. Smith behind the net, passes to Dallas Smith, number 20. He feeds it out to Sanderson. Sanderson ahead to Westfall to Mark Cott. 
And that puck came back outside the blue line, and then Marcotte carried it back in offside at the Chicago line with a minute and 14 seconds left in the second period. There's the Chicago bench, and in the middle of it, Keith Magnuson, number three, who hasn't seen any action today. He's in uniform, but he has a broken bone in his wrist and has a cast on it. But is in uniform, but hasn't been used by Billy Ray. Here's Bordalo for the Hawks on left wing. That shot deflected wide by Dallas Smith. He clears it out on right wing to Westfall. Now Stapleton a shot wide of the net with less than a minute to play in the period. Dallas Smith being forechecked by Angotti in behind the net. Angotti kicks it loose to Pappen. Back to Stapleton. The shot deflected by Bordalo and blocked at the defense. Now Westfall gets it outside the line to Sanderson to Marcotte. Here comes Marcotte with Westfall. And the play was broken up by Bill White. Jim Pappen with 35 seconds left. Flipping it in to Bordalo and it's offside at the Bruin blue line as Chris Bordalo is in ahead of the play over on right way. The Blackhawks have lost only one game on home ice this year. They have a home ice record of 24 wins, one loss, and five ties. And they've gone 12 games in a row without a loss. But the Hawks trail this one to the Bruins, 3-1. to one. Hawks have been particularly hard to score on on home ice. They have scored 10 shutouts on home ice and have given up only 45 goals in 30 games, or... 1.50 goals against on home ice. Puck shot into the Chicago zone and Jarrett is back to get it to Jerry Korab. Korab trying to shoot it into the Bruins zone. Sanderson is there to try and get it up. Lacroix held it in. Lacroix along the boards being checked by Westfall and Bobby Orr comes up with the puck with 15 seconds left. Orr in behind his own goal. Leads the Bruin rush. Here comes Orr to center up. Into the hot zone. Orr controlling the puck, holds it in that hot zone. Hill has it, flips it in front, and Marcotte deflected it wide. After a brilliant play by Orr, he held that puck for 15 seconds before he finally centered it to Marcotte, who deflected it wide at the sound of the buzzer. That's the end of the second period with the score. The Boston Bruins three, and the Chicago Blackhawks one. Hi, Andy Granatelli here. I almost feel silly saying this is Bobby Orr. I don't think there's a better known face in the National Hockey League or in sports in general. It's very difficult to even say this is Bobby Orr who because we used up all the superlatives an awful long time ago, Bob. I don't think we were prepared that you were going to be better year after year. Thanks very much for stopping in this afternoon. Bobby, one of the questions I've been asked around the league this year is what has happened to the Boston Bruins defensively? Uh, the fact that the whole team seems to have tightened up. We look at the race for the Vezina Trophy for the best goals against average, and there are the Bruins. They're fighting. Of course, we've always wanted to keep our goals against down. Uh, uh, this year, uh, I think the big reason is our goaltending. I think we're playing the same way, uh, but we're getting great goaltending day in and day out from Eddie and Jerry, with Eddie and Jerry, and uh, I think today was a good example of what we're getting. Uh, uh, I think it was Jimmy Pappen had the hole open net, and Eddie reached across and made a big save. We went down there and scored a goal to go ahead 2-1. So it's been like that all season long. And I, more than uh, uh, the forwards and defense been playing better defensively, I, I got to say it's been our goaltending. I've heard before that when your goaltender makes the big save, for some reason the team just f seems fired up, and frequently this will, this will happen. Well, today, I think today was a good example. It's a tight game. It uh, looks like it's going to be close all the way. And the score was tied 1-1, and uh, Eddie came out with a big save. And... We went down the ice and uh, scored a goal and then come back a couple minutes later and scored another. So uh, I think that's a good example. Listen, for I think the second time, uh, you guys last night scored two shorthanded goals and one power play. <laughs> What's the secret? Well, I don't know. We uh, uh, we get lucky, I guess, and maybe block a shot at the point or something, and then we have a two-on-one because we play it that are uh, at least one of our fours and... Most of the time, we hope both our, our forwards are out at the blue line. One Kelly up in, they're out around the blue line checking the points. So a lot of times we block shots. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to block shots at the blue line. And then we have a two-on-one, and uh, I think that's been the big thing. Bobby, I know that during the season, all hockey players stay in tip-top condition, mostly at the urging of the coach. There are frequent practice sessions, skating sessions, and yet watching you fellows out there, it seems impossible to believe you need that to stay loose. You seem to be in just perfect condition. It would seem to me the games carry it, but they don't, do they? 
Well, no, you've, you've got to stay in condition all season long. Uh, sometimes you get four or five and six days off. Well, maybe not six, but sometimes you get four and five days off. And uh, you've got to stay sharp. Uh, if you stay off the ice too long, it's, you know, just you can do so much in so little time. Just a split second uh, may mean a goal. So it's good to be out shooting and skating and, uh, you know, working plays out with your uh, line mates or your, your defense partner. And you, it's very important you keep the goaltender sharp because our goaltenders go, go game on, game off, and uh, they may sit for a week or sometimes even longer. Bobby, we got some of the highlights in the first period. You might be able to take a look at those. I think sometimes it's interesting to watch and see exactly what you guys did. And here's the best chance we have to take a look at it here. Beautiful save by Eddie. Yeah, Eddie came up with a couple big saves there. That's, uh, that's what we were talking about a little earlier. This is Pappen's goal coming up. Good pass by Angotti. Good play here. They had a, they had a fine play here. They had a three-way play going there. It was a fine play. I don't think he could fault anybody on that. Look how far out Eddie comes. Let's see where he's going. Yeah, he's coming. Eddie's uh, Eddie's one of the I think one of the best in the league for coming out of that cold uh, out of that crease, uh, uh, cutting the angle down. And uh, if you watch him against Bobby Hall, who shoots like nobody shoots, you watch Eddie. Well, they call it going out to challenge the guy. It's number four there. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was kind of a, a weak shot, and uh, Phil did, uh, tipped it in. Can't be too weak a shot, Bobby. When it went in the net, it was just beautiful. Well, it. Uh, Call those flutter birds and feel having to tip it in the net. Yeah. Bobby, what do you do in in the small amount of, of off time you've got? Well, as a matter of fact, we're going to take a look at the second period here. I'll, I'll hold the question for a bit. I'm going to take a good look at this one. I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> we will, as a matter of fact, we just get the heat down here a little bit. Bobby's really sweating, as you can tell. He's worked awfully hard at it, and uh, sitting here is about 110 degrees. Here we are, Bob. Well, that's just a little misunderstanding. <laughs> Not too much of anything. You got a good shot in. Well, I don't know. It was, I guess, a, a misunderstanding. Donnie already uh, let go a great shot from the point here, and, and Phil tipped the uh, uh, took a at it and knocked another one in. It was a great shot by, by Donnie Ari from the point, low and on the ice and on the net. And uh, I think this is the third one. Cash uh, has a, takes a great shot here in the left hand corner. Probably Tony didn't have that chance. He couldn't see it, I don't think. Bobby, I know you want to take it a little bit easy before the third period starts. Thanks so much for stopping in. Appreciate it, and have a good game. Nice being with you. Thank you. Bobby Orr. Back with more. It gets more and more incredible, as does Bobby Orr. Esposito with 103 points, 51 goals, and a total of 52 assists so far. John Rattel, one of the three men for the New York Rangers you'll see on the chart here this afternoon, is nevertheless staying very, very close. Again, they will be playing tonight. 41 goals, 58 assists, and a total of 99 points for Rattel. Bobby Orr, year after year, he does indeed get better. 27 goals, 65 assists, and a total of 92 points. Rod Gilbert, notice he's got 38 goals while Rattel has 41. This trio has a chance to get 40 goals apiece as one line. Very, very rare. Gilbert, 86 points on the total of 38 and 48 assists. Vic Hatfield right behind him with 37 goals, 46 assists, and a total of 83 points. Bobby Hall, Chicago, having another Bobby Hall year. A total of 73 points, 39 goals, and 34 assists. Frank Mahoblet, 66. Martin has broken the record now, getting his 39th goal last night. 23 assists, a total of 62 points. And with 60 at the bottom, Stanfield of Boston. The score once again is Boston 3, Chicago 1. Be ready for the start of the third period in just a moment. CBS is a great lineup of golf scheduled. On Saturday, you'll see the football baseball players golf tournament, followed by the CBS Golf Classic, and then the third round of the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic. In all, two and a half hours of golf, and then on Sunday, CBS will bring you the concluding round of the Gleason Tournament. Plenty of golf next weekend here on CBS. Getting ready to start the third period, there's Eddie Johnston, who's played a tremendous game in goal for the Bruins. In the first period, the Blackhawks outshot the Bruins 8-7. to seven. Then in the second, the Bruins outshot the Hawks 11-8. to eight. So Boston has had 18 shots on goal to the Hawks 16, but the Bruins lead 3-1. to one. Incidentally, there was quite a night in Montreal last night. I just talked to Sam Pollock, the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, to clear up some of the details. There's Tony Esposito coming onto the ice and the Blackhawks. They had a big snowstorm up in Montreal, 15 or 16 inches with gusty winds, and they have a strike of the snow-cleaning people up in Montreal. 
And last night there was a hockey game at the Montreal Forum. Well, you hear some of the details. The Canadians won the game over Philadelphia. Some of the players, two of them as a matter of fact, Yvonne Cornoyer and Jacques Lemaire had to go to the Montreal Forum by snowmobile. Several others had to walk, including Canadian goaltender Ken Dryden, who walked about five miles. Defenseman Jacques Lapierre walked about three miles to get to the Forum. Mark Tardif of the Canadians didn't get to the game until the end of the first period. Jean-Guy Gendra of the Philadelphia Flyers, who has relatives living in the Montreal area, didn't get to the game at all, apparently. He was out visiting the relatives and was unable to get to the Montreal Forum with that snowstorm. They had 18,066 tickets sold for the game. Only 5,000 fans were able to get there by the start of the game. And then as the game went on, they wound up with about 10,000 people able to get to the rink out of over 18,000 tickets sold. So it was quite a night and quite a snowstorm in Montreal, but the hockey game went on as scheduled. Ready for period three here at Chicago Stadium. Three to one for the Boston Bruins. Referee Bruce Hood drops the puck. Don Ory has it for Boston. Ory on left wing shooting it into the hot zone and Bill White takes over. Now to Stapleton. Stapleton passes to Angotti. He moves into the Bruins zone and Orr comes up with it. Bobby Orr to Stanfield. He's checked by Pappen. Orr gets it again. Passing at the Stanfield. It was too far ahead. Goes into the Hawks zone and Stapleton's back together. Stapleton passing it out to Pappen. Mark Cott has Pappen tied up along the boards. Buck comes loose. Here's Don Ory shooting it in. And Angotti takes over. Here's Angotti to Pappen. Shot into the Bruins zone and back to get it is Don Ory. He touches it, and the Blackhawks are called for icing. We've played 41 seconds of the third period. The Boston Bruins three, the Chicago Blackhawks one. Bill Esposito has scored a pair of goals, his 50th and 51st of the season. Wayne Cashman, the other goal for the Bruins, his 17th. Jim Pappen, the only Chicago scorer for Pappen, goal number 20 of the season. Stanfield getting ready to face off in the Chicago zone against Lou Angotti. Stanfield gets the draw. Here's Ori at the point. That shot deflects wide. Now it's Bordelow for Chicago. Back to Stapleton. Out on right wing to Bill White. White into Angotti, who was offside in ahead of the play at the Boston Blue Line. The Hawks started off in the first 10 minutes of the game and seemed to dominate play, but since that point, the Bruins have come on. And, of course, the Bruins have had some great goaltending from Eddie Johnston. The action has stopped during the first period. Let's pause for a moment. Just on the Bruins' side of center ice, Bobby Hull gives it to Korab, and Korab shoots it into the Boston zone. Back to get it is Rick Smith. Rick Smith out on right wing to Cashman. Wayne Cashman shooting at the center ice. Korab knocks it down there. Now here comes Cashman for Boston. Moves into the Chicago zone. Trying to set up Esposito. Let's the shot go wide of the net. Here's Bill Esposito centering it. And it was cleared by Nestorinko who starts back. Lead pass to Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull with a blast that's high off the glass. Buck loose in the Bruins zone. And here comes Esposito on left wing. Rick Bailey and Cashman. Esposito trying to flip it in front. He's knocked down, gets up again, still holds the puck. Now it goes to Dallas Smith to Phil Esposito. The shot! Tony Esposito stopped it as he went to his knees. Korab along the right wing boards. Clears it to center to Bobby Hull. Moving into the Bruins zone and it's offside. That pass came from inside the Chicago blue line to Hull on the Boston side of center ice and he was offside. You know, Dan, it's funny. I've heard some fans say it's just not fair having a team play the night before an afternoon game, and it just shouldn't be scheduled that way. Guess who had the night off, and guess who played last night? Chicago looks to be the much more tired team. Boston's got plenty of life carrying the play to them, and they're the team that played in Minnesota. Sometimes that scoreboard has something to do with the way you feel, and it's 3-1 to one for the Bruins. Here's Stapleton. Over to Bill White. White leads the four-man Hawk rush to center into Makita. Makita back to White, and it's offside at the Bruin line. Faceoff will be at the Boston Blue Line. You and Bobby Orr brought up a good point as we look at Stan Makita. 
And you made mention of it, Jim, as it happened. A big save by Ed Johnston at one end, but the score tied 1-1. And then the Bruins come right back and score. It doesn't work all the time, of course, Dan, but I've seen it happen certainly half a dozen. It just, it just seems to inspire them. I don't know what it is. And it was Eddie Johnston's best save as he literally robbed Pappen and Nestorinko. Here's Bill White. Trying to get it out. Dennis Hull couldn't clear it. Here's Sanderson in the corner. Derek Sanderson centered it. White clears it. Now it's picked up by Leach. Reg Leach centering it to Westfall a shot. And that's stopped and cleared by Tony Esposito. And Don Ori is back together. Ori for the Bruins. Gives the puck to Orr. Orr passing it out to Sanderson. Here comes Sanderson to center. On left wing into the Chicago zone. Still has the puck. Sanderson stick handling beautifully. Still controls it. Centering it to Orr. And Dennis Hall intercepts and starts back for the Hawks. Dennis Hall with that hard slap shot lets it go. Johnston stopped it and Orr takes over. To Reg Leach. Leach gets the puck back to Orr. Or at center ice to Westfall, moving in, one man back, and Westfall's shot deflected by that one man, Bill White, and it goes wide. Stapleton, passing it to Coral, who shoots it to center. Or bats it down there, gives it to Leach. The young Bruin winger, Reg Leach, into the hot zone, was checked, and here's Dennis Hull. Rink wide pass to Coral. Coral trying to go around Ori, who took him out of the play. Now it's Westfall behind the net. Nikita in there for checking. Puck comes to Bill White. White flipped it in front and Coral deflected it wide. Now Dennis Hull behind the net to Makita. Stan Makita centering it. Intercepted by Leach and here come the Bruins. Leach to center ice. Shoots it off the boards into the Chicago zone and Stapleton goes back to get it as the Bruins change on the fly. Coral with a pass to Dennis Hull was behind him. John McKenzie has it for Boston. Ahead to Sanderson. Racing in on goal. Backhand shot and Esposito. A great glove save on Sanderson. Sanderson held that puck just about as long he as he won. possibly could. And I think took about the best available shot to him. He's not about to blast through. He's looking to lift it just enough to get just higher than the elbow and never quite did. Esposito did a good job. Cut the angle down another. Face off in the Chicago zone. We played three minutes and 51 seconds of the third period. Three to one for the Bruins over the Blackhawks. Brian Campbell for Chicago's Billy Ray in the last part of the game has been going with four lines. Lacroix back to Campbell. To start. Eddie Johnson, a good save. Stanfield behind the net gives it to Dallas Smith out to McKenzie. He's checked by Jarrett, but Rick Smith is there to cover up. Number 10, Rick Smith. Passing it now to McKenzie. McKenzie works his way to center, shoots it into the Chicago zone, and number 17, Daryl Maggs, a rookie for the Hawks, back to get it to Korab, now to Jarrett, out to Brian Campbell on left wing, he headmans the puck to Lacroix, and Lacroix is checked by Rick Smith. Mark Cott clears the puck into the Hawks zone. Korab and Stanfield race back after it, Korab won the race, touches it, and the Bruins are called for icing on the play. 3-1 the score in favor of the Boston Bruins. We've still got about 15 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the hockey game. And Chicago could very well be getting a second win along about here. They look a little bit sharper. What they need, of course, is that one big break with a 3-1 game and the home ice advantage. Remember, they have only lost here one time. Of course, it was to Boston. Andre Lacroix, former member of the Philadelphia Flyers, at center for the Hawks to face off against Fred Stanfield. Lacroix, Campbell, and Maggs for Chicago. Stanfield with Marcotte on left wing and McKenzie on right wing. Now the puck goes to Stanfield. Stanfield giving the puck to Rick Smith ahead to Marcotte. Marcotte moves in with a quick wrist shot. Caught by Esposito and here's Korab for the Blackhawks. Out to Lacroix. On left wing to Campbell. Campbell moving in on that shot. Hits Rick Smith and moves away up into the first balcony. Here at Chicago Stadium. That one may have the record for height. <laughs> Keep stats and just about everything else, Dan. I guess there are very few go that high up. As a matter of fact, where our broadcast position is, I guess it'll be up about another 50 feet, perhaps as much as 75 feet in the air. That's a long, long shot. Don Marcotte is out playing on the Stanfield McKenzie line in place of Busick, and I don't see Busick over on the Bruin bench, so he must have been injured in that second period. Here comes Marcotte on left wing, checked by Jim Pappen. 
Stanfield, number 17, gets it. Back to Rick Smith, now to Dallas Smith. He lost it and escapes, but covers up and gets Mark caught on left wing, checked by Jim Pappen. Stanfield, number 17, gets it. Back to Rick Smith, now to Dallas Smith. He lost it in his skates, but covers up and gives it to Rick Smith. His left wing pass to Mark Cott. Dropping it back to Stanfield, he's checked. Now Dallas Smith into the corner to Mark Cott. Mark Cott out in front, McKenzie was there, but Esposito intercepted it and cleared it. Here's Dallas Smith in the corner. In behind that net, Dallas Smith taken out of the play by White and Stapleton. Shoots it out on left wing. Wardle will beat to the puck by Rick Smith that it's fired back into the Chicago zone. And it goes up over the glass. And we'll have a face-off just outside the Chicago Blackhawk blue line. The Chicago Blackhawks have had things fairly much their own way in the Western Division after that early season lead by Minnesota. And as we look at their bench, Dennis Hull, number 10, has certainly had more than his share of the glory for this club. Incidentally, he's having a fine game this afternoon. He's really been working the corners very, very hard. One of the toughest places to play hockey. Something wrong over at the penalty timekeeper's bench here. And that's the reason for the delay. Apparently, the linesman, out of our camera's view, down against the boards, repairing a hole in the ice, it seems to be as Wayne Cashman helps him out by scraping some snow loose. Phil Esposito with Bailey on left wing and Cashman on right wing. There's Esposito. Goals number 50 and 51. Incidentally, Cashman's been doing a fairly good job on Bobby Hall, too. He skated well today. Now it's Bill White over to Stapleton. Stapleton, a pass to Bordalo, who tips it into the Bruins zone, and Orr is back to get it. Bobby Orr. Out on right wing to Cashman. Cashman coming to center ice. Full check by Angotti. Gets it again. Now Bordalo is after Cashman. Cashman with that long reach gets it to Esposito who fires it into the Chicago zone. And Tony Esposito gives it to Bill White. Now to Stapleton. Out to Angotti. Lou Angotti. Across the line. Stick handler. Checked from behind by Phil Esposito. Esposito gets by Stapleton, moving into the hot zone, but Bill White was back to cover up. And here comes White. A pass to Bordalo off his stick into the ruin zone, or back to get it. Bordalo tying him up, trying to pin him against the boards. Esposito and Angotti go in there, and they hold it there. We now pause five seconds for station identification. WCBS-TV, New York. Faceoff will be just off to Ed Johnson's left in the Boston zone. I mentioned just a moment or so ago that Cashman had played a very good game against Bobby Hull, and we haven't been keeping accurate track, but I think that last turn was the first time they were matched up that way, line to line. Here's Angotti back on the point to Bill White. He shoots it around on the board. Fedor is there for the Bruins to get it out to McKenzie. He headmans the puck to Stanfield. Stapleton knocks it down into Pappen. Now to Angotti moving in and the shot deflected by Orr. And it goes up over the glass. And Orr and the Bruin defense have been doing a good job of blocking what? Chicago shots here today. We've played six minutes and 44 seconds of the third period. Right, the Bruins the three. Going on? I don't know. And the Blackhawks one. Almost no rest at all for the Esposito line. They're coming right back on the ice, and this time Bobby Hull's line is on the ice as well. So Cashman and Hull will be matched up, and I think it's only because Hull hit the ice that they're back out. Now the puck goes to Jarrett with a shot. Johnston the save. Here's Hull in the corner trying to center it. Cashman comes up with it. Flips it out to Bailey on left wing. Bailey being tied up by Nestorinko. And Bailey now checked by Pitt Martin. 
Moves around the net, still has the puck to Cashman. Cashman drops it back to Dallas Smith. Out at center ice to Cashman. Cashman moving in. Let's the shot go, and Esposito had to duck as it was a high one that went off the glass. It's Esposito holding it in, but Nestorinko takes over for the Hawks out to Bobby Hull. Hull on left wing. Skated off by Rick Smith, and Wayne Cashman is back together. Cashman behind his own goal, checked by Nestorinko, gets it back again. And here comes Cashman to center right. Shoots the puck into the Chicago zone. Esposito clears it to number seven, Martin. Martin up to Bobby Hull. Hull the center into the Ruin zone. Rick Smith clears it, and the puck goes to center ice, and Jarrett, number four, takes over for the Chicago Blackhawks. Shot off the boards into Bobby Hull on left wing. His rising shot caught by Johnston. Dallas Smith takes over. Smith along the boards for Cashman. Cashman out to Esposito. He couldn't get it out. Jarrett holding it in, and he dumps it back in behind the net. Eddie Johnston intercepts it. It goes to Bobby Hull. Here's Hull centering it. Rick Smith trying to clear it. Jarrett a shot, and Bobby Hull deflected it just wide. Now Phil Esposito clearing it off of Cashman stick into the Hawk zone. And back to get it is Korab to Jarrett. Jarrett over on right wing to Bobby Hull. Hull now to Jarrett. Jarrett out at center ice to Makita, and here comes Dan Makita, checked by Dallas Smith, who's played a strong game defensively for the Bruins. Now Bobby Hull tried to shoot it in and hits Nestorinko and goes down the ice. And Nestorinko has to go back for it. Nestorinko to Korab on right wing. The Bruins playing a good checking game at this point with that 3-1 to one lead. Here's Westfall at his own blue line to Reg Leach at center. Leach... Moving in, centers it, and Esposito deflects it with his big goal stick, and it goes up over the glass. Chicago was desperately trying to get Bobby Hull and his line mates off on that particular turn. They couldn't do it. The puck stayed in their end. They never clearly had possession, and Boston kept breaking back across the line every time it looked like they might do it. Uh, one of the big things, of course, in hockey, at any time you can get a fresh line on there, catch the other side on the line, change itself, it's going to be to your advantage. 3-1 the score, Boston on top. Time growing short now for Chicago with 11 minutes remaining. Derek Sanderson out to face off against Stan Makita. Perhaps two of the best face off men in the National Hockey League. This time Makita gets the draw to Stapleton, number 12. Stapleton, long pass ahead to Dennis Holonor is there to intercept. He gives it to Sanderson. Derek Sanderson dropping it back to Orr. Orr takes his time, passes it to Orr. He out at center to Westfall. Westfall flips it down into the Hawk zone and Stapleton is back to get it. Over on left wing to Dennis Hull. He dropped it back behind the net to Stapleton. Stapleton trying to clear it out to Makita, but Reg Leach is there to intercept. Here's Leach shooting it in. Westfall carries it in. It's broken up and back comes Makita for the Hawks with Dennis Hull. Makita stick handle moving in, flips it in front, and Dennis Hull couldn't get a stick on it to deflect it. Sanderson for the Bruins. Tied up by Bill White and they hold it there. And there'll be a face-off in the Bruins zone. Jim, we've talked about it uh, several times this year. The Bruins have certainly turned themselves around defensively and do a much better job of checking than they used to do. What it turned out to be really, Dan, was the fact they used to just get careless. They played good defense at the beginning of the game, and they had so much offense when they'd score, they just sort of let up a bit. They don't let up anymore. Here in this third period, they have been quite content to keep an eye on the Hawks and do some checking, and they've done an excellent job as White shoots it into the Bruins zone. Back is Orr to get it. Orr out on the wing to Westfall. He had managed the puck to Sanderson. One man back, Sanderson against Stapleton. Sanderson waits for some help, trying to center it. Hits a skate, and Bill White gets it for the Hawks out to Makita. Makita to Dennis Hall. Dennis Hall dropping it back to Coral. Coral to Makita. Oh, and he fired it wide. Beautiful passing play, and Westfall shoots at the center. Bill White going back to get it for the Blackhawks. Ten minutes gone by. We have 9.30 left in the game. Here's Bill White into Makita. Makita knocked down by Orr, and here comes Orr to center. All himself. One man back. Orr. McKenzie catching up, the pass to McKenzie, and he deflected it wide. 
Now Bill White trying to shoot it out. It goes to Mags. Rookie Daryl Mags. Checked by Ori. Ori then lost it to Mags again. Mags centers it, and Orr is there to intercept, and here comes Orr. But Mark caught. Mark caught into the Hawk zone, centering it, and it's deflected wide. Doug Jarrett for the Hawks. Out on left wing to Dennis Hall. Here comes Hall, skated off by Rick Smith. He gives the puck to McKenzie. Now to Stanfield. Fred Stanfield, number 17. Tied up on the boards, and Lacroix has it for the Hawks. To Campbell, number 14. Campbell, a back in the third off Eddie Johnson's club. Here's Mags behind the net, trying to center it. Rick Smith knocked it with his glove to teammate Fred Stanfield, and that's the reason for the stoppage in play. You can bat the play the boards and pass this batter to head to one of your teammates, where he happens to be, and so they stop play off the right side of Ed Johnson. Can't say enough about his goaltending here today. We talked a couple of times about the great save on Pappen. Uh, just setting the Boston Bruins up for their goal, but more important, they kept Chicago from scoring the particular time, and it did, didn't seem like he had a chance at it. Here's Jarrett, a shot from the point that is blocked by Stanfield. Buck still loose in the Bruins' zone. Now here's Jarrett with a shot. That hits Stanfield. And back comes Mark Cock to Stanfield, who's checked by Jarrett. Meggs has it for the Hawks to Campbell. Rick Smith intercepting and flipping it down into the Chicago zone. And Doug Jarrett, number four, is back together. Over on right wing to Korab. He headmans the puck to Lacroix. Off his stick, and Smith shoots it to center. It's an offside pass. And the faceoff will be just inside the Bruin blue line with eight minutes and three seconds left in the game. Three to one for the Bruins. The action has stopped here in the third period. Let's pause for a moment. More, more. White who shoots it into the Bruins zone and Dallas Smith is back to get it. The Bruins lead three to one. Dallas Smith passing it out to Esposito. Bill Esposito moving in, centers it, and Magnuson cleared it away. Magnuson trying to shoot it out to Angotti who gets it to center. Rick Smith lost it. Now Pappen picks it up. There's Magnuson running into Cashman and knocking him down, and the Bruins are called for icing on the play. Magnuson is wearing a wrist, a cast on his left wrist. I had that trouble in the first period, too. Cast on his left wrist, and uh, Billy Ray hasn't used him for four games in a row. With the Hawks trailing, I would expect, and I'm just trying to think of what Billy Ray would be thinking, he's putting out his fiery defenseman to try and fire up his hockey club. There you go. Almost have said that Cashman was wearing that cast on his chin after that collision because he looked it up pretty high. Now from the faceoff, Orr gets it for the Bruins. Out to McKenzie, the pass too far. Goes down into the Chicago zone with White back to get it. And again, the Bruins are called for Isaac. Three to one the score. The game's certainly far from out of sight from a Chicago standpoint. And Dan might very well have put his finger on it. Perhaps they just hope that somebody's going to get something stirred up out there. And so far this afternoon... The Hawks, outside of, I guess, the first seven to ten minutes in the game, haven't shown the kind of fire that they must show against a team like Boston. There's no way to intimidate this Boston team. You've got to skate with a man-to-man as best you can, and Chicago's been lagging. Blue and Gotti ready to face off against Stanfield as some of the players jump into the face-off circle. Neil Armstrong trying to straighten them out now. And the Bruins get the draw, and here comes McKenzie on right wing. To Marcotte. Marcotte moving in and they call that offside as McKenzie moved in ahead of the puck carrier Don Marcotte and Magnuson has some words with Marcotte. Boston is now running into a series of offsides and bad passes and it just could be Dan if the pace is beginning to tell on them. It's sometime the first sign. Seven minutes and 17 seconds left in the game. Three to one for the Bruins. Here's Keith Magnuson, Denver University graduate, back to get the puck. Bad man in the National Hockey League last year when he led the league in penalties with a record number of minutes. The Hawks clear at the center. Orr is there to get it. Orr being watched by Chris Bordelow. And Orr chases, is chased back behind his own goal. Orr gives it to Stanfield. Stanfield leaves it for Orr. Over on left wing to Don Orr. Here comes Orr leading the Bruins to center. Fires it into the corner, and back is Bordelow to pick it up for Chicago. Chris Bordelow along the boards. Lost at Stanfield, and McKenzie a shot, and Esposito 
a good close-in save. Bruins with the pressure on, or a shot. Esposito kicked that out. Now Marcotte tried to center it, and Pappen has it for the Hawks to Magnuson. Magnuson for Andrade to Bordelow. Bordelow moving in, tried to center it, and Eddie Johnson got a stick on it and then pounced on the puck and held on. The action has stopped here in the third period. Let's pause for a moment. Some of the best days. Face off in the Bruins zone and Phil Esposito gets the draw. Shoots at the center ice. Jarrett back to his own blue line over to Big Jerry Korab, number 22. Korab to Bobby Hull. The Golden Jet being watched by Cashman. Chase back into his own zone to Korab. Korab now to Jarrett. Back to Korab who carries into the Bruins zone. Dropping it to Mags. Here's Darryl Mags with a shot. Loose in front of the net, and the Bruins cleared in Bailey. Tried to shoot it out. Mags held it in. Daryl Mags checked by Esposito. Six minutes left in the game. Here's Phil Esposito. Trying to move it out, and he does. Esposito, the center ice to Cashman, who races in on right wing. Cashman into the corner. Taken out of the play by Pitt Martin, and Jarrett has it for the Hawks. To Martin. Pitt Martin, number seven. Fires it off the boards into the Bruins zone, and Cashman is back to get it. Cashman trying to clear it out. Bobby Hull has it, holding it in. Now it's Bailey for the Bruins, flipping at the center ice. Cashman and Hull fight for it, and the puck goes up over the boards. Five minutes and 17 seconds left in the game. Boston three, Chicago one. Phil Esposito has scored two Boston goals. Cashman the other. Jim Pappen for Chicago. Phil just came up with one heck of a move, too, and almost gave uh, Cashman a chance at that net again with a long poke check to push it out in front of himself and the defending Chicago Blackhawk players. Moved in very quickly. He's got that surprising speed when he needs it, Dan, because he doesn't look like he's that fast. If we have any time in the post-game show, I imagine you're going to sing happy birthday to Phil Esposito. I imagine I'm not. <laughs> Phil Esposito celebrating his 30th birthday today. Puck shot into the Bruins zone, and Orr is back to get it, number four. Or with five minutes left, passes it out to Reg Leach on right wing. Leach couldn't clear it. There's Stapleton with a shot. Wide of the net, and Westfall has it for Boston. Tried to set up Leach. Stapleton knocks it down. Westfall gets it again. Now it's Dennis Hall passing it into Coro. With Coro centering it. Dennis Hall, a shot, and Eddie Johnston came across and made the save. Now it's Stapleton, a shot from the point. Block. And Leach for the Bruins clears it to center ice. White for the Blackhawks. Passing to Dennis Hull. Hull across the line. Getting it over to Coro. Coro into the corner against Doerr. Bump Doerr to the ice. The Doerr just sits on the puck. And we'll have a face-off in the Bruins zone. Four minutes and 25 seconds left in the hockey game. Bill Esposito celebrating his... 30th birthday with goals number 50 and 51 of the season here today. Face off in the Bruins zone. It comes to center ice and Stapleton gives it to Bill White. Back to Stapleton. Hawks trying to mount some offense here. To Coral on right wing. Cliff Coral dropping it back and Sanderson with a good defensive play breaks it up and clears it down the ice and Stapleton is going back for it for the Hawks. Pat Stapleton. Four minutes left in the game as the Hawks get at the center. And Don Ori has it there. Ori turning to get away from Makita. Over to Bobby Orr. Orr flipping it off the boards out to Leach. Here comes Leach to center ice into Sanderson. Back to Leach is in the clear and on goal a shot. And Esposito went to his knees to Rob Redley. Now Dennis Hall. The center ice gets away from Sanderson. Into Makita. Flipping it into the corner to Dennis Hall. He's behind the net. Hall trying to work it in front. Back to Stapleton. Stapleton shot blocked by Leach and bounces all the way back into the hot zone. Three minutes, 20 seconds left. Stapleton to Bill White. Out on left wing to Dennis Hall. And it's offside. And they face off. We'll come back into the Chicago zone. The action has stopped here in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. 
Ken Kelly with Jim Gordon back at Chicago Stadium. Three minutes, 14 seconds left in the game. The Boston Bruins lead the Chicago Blackhawks 3-1. to one. Here's Chris Portolo back to Jarrett. Now over on right wing to Korab. The big Hawk defenseman Korab cuts over onto the left side, shooting it into the Bruins zone. And then McKenzie rode Korab hard against the boards. McKenzie couldn't get it out. Here's Jarrett for the Hawks. Moving in, a backhand shot, and he shot it wide. Buck loose behind the net, Bordalo. Sanders a Jarrett, a shot, and that's blocked by Dallas Smith. And Rick Smith clears it off Stanfield's stick down the ice. Back to get it, Korab touching it, and the Bruins are called for icing. A couple of good scoring chances for the Hawks. One was wide, and Dallas Smith blocked the other shot. NFL action will follow today's hockey game on many of these CBS stations. Today's show is a look at the Dallas Cowboys as they put together the best season in their 12-year history. That's today on many of these CBS stations. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. Rick Smith for the Bruins, shooting it over onto the left wing to Bailey. He missed it, and back to get it is Korab for Chicago. Korab to Jarrett, Jarrett to Angotti, moving into the Bruins zone for Angotti, trying to center it, knocked down by Rick Smith, but the puck is cleared to center, and Korab is all the way back to his own line, giving it to Doug Jarrett, Jarrett back to Korab, the Hawks trying to move it out of their own zone, out to Pappen at center, Jim Pappen shooting the puck into the Bruins zone, goes loose to Angotti, to Jarrett, back in the corner to Angotti, who tries to center it. Now Jarrett in behind that net along the boards. Here's Dallas Smith coming up with it. Bordalo in checking him. It goes to Bailey. Garnet Bailey on left wing just shot at the center. Two minutes left in the game. Korak for the Blackhawks. Turning back near his own blue line. Passes to Mark and he's checked by Bailey. Bruins doing some marvelous checking here in the third period. Chris Bordalo to Stapleton. Stapleton at center to Pitt Martin. He leaves the puck for Bordalo. Bordalo puts it into the Bruins zone, and Dallas Smith, number 20, takes over for Boston. The West Ball. He cleared it down into the Hawk zone. Whitey Stapleton to Bobby Hull. Here's Hull out on right wing to Mags. Back to Hull. Hull into the Bruins zone. Checked by Ori and Cashman. Who's played a fine game for the Bruins today. Gives it to Westfall. Westfall moving in. Let's the shot go. It hits Stapleton. White behind the net. Lost it. Here's Esposito. A shot. And Tony Esposito makes the save and cleared the puck. Esposito with a minute left in the game. Trying to hold it in. Gets it to Cashman. Cashman to Westfall. Ed Westfall behind the net. Checked by Bobby Hull. Out to Darrell Maggs. The Hawk rookie Maggs to center ice. And Don Ory breaks it up. Ory. Westfall and Mags and White all hold it against the boards right at center ice. 45 seconds left in the game. The Boston Bruins three and the Chicago Blackhawks one. Some of the fans here at Chicago Stadium start to head for the exits. Of course, the Hawks the other night scored two goals in six seconds, both by Jim Pappen. So anything can happen. Happened got two goals in six seconds for the Hawks against Philadelphia Flyers. Now the Hawks clear it into the Bruins zone. Orr is back to get it to Marcotte. Now to Bill Esposito. Esposito moving in and Marcotte went in ahead of the play on left wing. And we'll have a face off at the Chicago Blackhawks blue line with 33 seconds left in the game. Bruins can increase their league lead in the East Division to 11 points with a victory here today, although the Rangers play tonight. Here's Orr, back behind his own goal. 25 seconds left. Orr trying to weave his way out of his own end. Chase back in there, but pulls onto the puck. Orr, back of the net. Feeds it out to Westfall. Goes all the way down the ice. Tony Esposito has to make the save and clears it to center. Goes back to Orr with 10 seconds left. Or for the Bruins, who lead 3-1. to one. Five seconds. Or flipping the puck high in the air all the way down the ice. And the horn goes to end the game. The Boston Bruins have defeated the Chicago Blackhawks for the fourth time in five meetings this season. And they race out onto the ice to congratulate goaltender Eddie Johnston.
That's the end of the game with the final score. The Boston Bruins three and the Chicago Blackhawks one. We'll return to Chicago Stadium. One of the best ways to show you what the little Ford Pinto is all about is to show you its family tree. Meet Pinto's great-grandfather, the Model T. Its almost indestructible grandfather, the Model A. Its rugged old uncle, a 36 Ford Coupe. Its thrifty British cousin, a Ford Cortina. And its dependable German brother-in-law, Thomas. The point is, Pinto comes from good, solid stock with a good, solid engine and a welded steel body and a wide, stable stance for a good, solid feeling on the road. Pinto is simply the newest member of an old family of basic, dependable economy cars. When you get back to basics, you get back to Ford. Pinto, two-door sedan or three-door runabout at your Ford dealers. Hello again, everyone. Dan Kelly back in our broadcast booth here at Chicago Stadium. We've just watched the Boston Bruins with an almost perfect uh, demonstration of how to play hockey, beat the Chicago Blackhawks 3-1. to one. The Hawks started out strongly. They led 1-0, and then the Bruins came on. They tied it before the end of the period on a goal by Phil Esposito, his 50th of the year. They added a pair in the second period, Esposito again and Wayne Cashman. And that made it 3-1. to one. Jim Pappen scored the only Chicago goal. The shots on goal, very close. The Bruins out shooting the Blackhawks 27-23. to 23. And I think one of the key points in the game, you hear so much about the Bruins and about Phil Esposito and his scoring feats and Bobby Orr. I thought today that Eddie Johnston, the veteran Bruin goaltender, played as good a hockey game as I've seen him play. And he held them in there with some big saves, particularly when the score was 1-1 in the first period. So let's go down to the intermission studio now and meet Eddie Johnston, the Bruin goaltender. He's down there with Jim Gordon. Thank you, Dan. This is Eddie Johnson, a tired man, but he came in here with an awfully big smile. Eddie, I thought that stop on Jim Pappen was something very special for this game. Well, at, at the time, Jim, there was 1-1 at the time, and uh, it changed the whole game around. I think on the same play, we went down and scored on Tony. You did. So it was, a, it was a big save for our club. You found this before, Ed. We discussed this a little bit with Bobby Orr, and I've had other players tell me the same thing, that frequently the most inspirational guy in the club is the goaltender. If you make the big stop, something happens to the players. Well, I think that's true in every club. I think uh, the goalkeeper is the key guy, especially in the early part of the game, Jim, and uh, any time you can make the big save early for the guys, it gives them a little lift, and uh, it happened today. I came up with the big save a couple of times, and uh, our club played very well in front of me, Jim. I think they've been playing well in front of just about everybody this year. You know, one of the things that, that is unique, I think, this year with Boston... I shouldn't say that because Boston did this last year, too. For the big games, the games against the teams that you think you're really going to have to face in the end of the season, the New York Rangers, Chicago Blackhawks, you seem to put out something real extra special. You're trying to really uh, cycle them out, I think. Uh, I think in, uh, since about November, I think uh, every big game on the road we had a win. Uh, Jim, we won. Uh, we beat New York in New York in a big game. Uh, Jerry Cheevers played excellent for us there. Uh, we beat Chicago here in a 5-1 game. Uh, we went into Montreal, beat them 8-5, uh, and that score up there. But... Uh, Generally, we've been winning the big game, and that's a sign of a great hockey club, Jim. Sure is. You know, one of the things I've noticed, maybe you've noticed the same thing. During a warm-up, the goaltender skating around will frequently stop at the blue line and watch an opposing goaltender during the practice. Are you trying to learn something about him or what? Well, you try to pick him up. You might see if he might be fighting the puck at that particular day, and, uh, and if he is, uh, you try to tell the guys, well, listen, he's jumping at the puck or something like that. I think they do the same thing to us, Jim, so uh, that's what you try to watch if he's fighting the puck a little bit that day. Explain a little bit to me, fighting the puck. You mean he's overreacting for it? Well, he's jumping at it. That saves the a puck. Instead of catching it, he's bouncing off his chest and bouncing off his arm. And uh, any time you see a goalkeeper doing that in warm-ups, you know, uh, if you get one early one on him, I think you've got a good chance of pour a few by him, Jim. Do you find yourself fighting the puck, and what do you try to do? Well, you just got to just gotta concentrate a little bit more, and you just got to fight a little bit more. But uh, the big thing is when you're fighting a puck like that is get your body in front of it, Jim, and uh, that's a big thing you learn with experience. You, uh, you try to uh, adjust to that by playing, and uh, that's a big thing. Have you and Jerry changed at all this year? Are you concentrating more late in the game, or is the defense helping you more? Because your goals against average is great. Well, uh, our defense has been playing excellent all year. I think we have the men coming back all year, and I think that's been a big asset to our club. 
I think last year when we were winning a 6-1, uh, 6-1 in the second period, we went up 8-5 or 8-4. I think now when we're winning a 6-1 at the end of second, we end up winning 6-1, which is great for Jerry and I. Do you know who's coming at you? Do you look up and say, uh-oh, it's Hull? Well, when you see him, you got to pray a little bit. you got to hope that he misses the net. But uh, you don't think that way. You know, a guy like Bobby Hill, you got to get set a little quicker than the average guy. And uh, I think uh, him and Dennis are probably the two finest shooters in the league. And any time they're coming at you, you, you got to be prepared. After a game like this, Eddie, you must feel awfully happy, first of all. But when do you finally come down? When's the first time you take a deep breath and realize it's all over? It must take you hours. It'll take me about three or four hours, especially in a game like this, because you get all keyed up. And uh, it'll take me about another three or four hours before I get back down on my level again. Then what? Then I'll relax a little bit, Jim. <laughs> you, know, you certainly didn't relax out there this afternoon. I hope you saw the goal yes. that he stopped. Uh, I didn't no. think you had a chance for it. I was amazed, amazed you could even make the move. Where, where, where did it break you? It hit me in the arm. Uh, Jimmy hesitated for about a second. I just stuck my arm over there and it uh, hit me in the uh, lower part of the arm and I uh, was very fortunate that the puck stayed out on me. There, they talk about games being games of inches. Uh, this one just happened to hit him in the right spot. It certainly hit Boston in the right spot. Ed, again, thank you very much. I thought you had a great game. Thank you very much, Jim. Let's go back in the booth now to Dan Kelly. Okay, Jim, the final score again here this afternoon, the Boston Bruins defeating the Chicago Blackhawks 3-1. to one. There are a couple of other afternoon games in the NHL today. Pittsburgh at Minnesota. We have no score in on that as yet. And another afternoon game, St. Louis at California, starts at about a half an hour. Tonight, Toronto at Philadelphia, Montreal at Buffalo, and Detroit at New York. Next Sunday, CBS has another National Hockey League game with the Philadelphia Flyers meeting the Detroit Red Wings at 1.30 Eastern time. The Flyers uh, in a scramble in that West Division for fourth place, and the Detroit Red Wings fighting for a playoff spot as well, so it should be a good one. Right now, this is Dan Kelly with Jim Gordon saying goodbye from Chicago Stadium. The National Hockey League was brought to you by Ford, who invites you to see all the 72 better ideas at your Ford dealer. And by Alka-Seltzer, for relief of headache and upset stomach. And by Rise, the rich, moist lather. And by Hertz, where you don't just rent a car, you rent a company. The National Hockey League telecasts are produced by CBS Television Sports. CBS News begins live coverage of President Nixon's historic visit to China tonight, starting at 9.30, 8.30 Central, 6.30 Pacific Time on CBS.